Good evening, Irish fans, and welcome to this evening's Notre Dame football Saturday night watch party. Tonight, we take a look back at the 2000 matchup between Notre Dame and Purdue. The 13th-ranked Boilermakers were led by Heisman Trophy candidate, senior quarterback Drew Brees. The Irish were ranked 21st and coming off a heartbreaking 27-24 overtime home loss the week before to number one-ranked Nebraska. The Irish were also with us, starting quarterback Arnez Battle for this game. Battle had suffered a broken bone in his left wrist in the Nebraska game. Tight end and high school quarterback Gary Godsey got the start for Notre Dame, his first collegiate start at quarterback, one of many fascinating storylines in this game. The first time starter against the Heisman Trophy winner was one of those storylines, but even more important was the matchup of the Notre Dame defense against Drew Brees and the Purdue basketball on grass offense. Our guest today is one of the heroes of that game, unanimous first team All-American and starting quarterback Shane Walton. Shane, thank you for joining us. Awesome. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. I've been watching them and, and I'm enjoying the, the podcast. So it, it's a blast. Now, Shane, you have one of the more fascinating stories in Notre Dame football history. And that says a lot. You came to Notre Dame on a soccer scholarship. You were really good. You're in second team all Big, East, all Big East honors after leading the soccer team and scoring as a freshman with 10 goals. And then you decided you wanted to play football and you had to make a choice because they both played in the fall. For some of the younger folks out there that are not familiar with your story, tell us why you made that decision. You know, I just remember uh, practicing on the soccer field my freshman year, and I could hear the football team on the field next to us. And I just remember my head and my heart wanting to be on that side of the field, and it wasn't really in soccer anymore. And so um, that's when I was, I knew that I needed to do something different. I love soccer. I still play with my buddies I grew up with, but at the time it was, it was my heart and head was, was in the football. Did you think every athlete has to be confident, but did you think you had unanimous first team all American skills? No, not at all. Um, I knew, I thought I could come in and compete. Uh, I knew it would take a while. Um, I had to transition my body. Um, you know, I was probably about 165, 170 playing soccer. And so I knew I had to transform my body, put some muscle on, uh, get a little bit more quick bursts. Um, but as I said before, it's, um, you know, soccer made me a better football player and football made me a better soccer player. So I, I think playing multi-sports really, really helps you in a lot of different avenues. Now, 2000 is your first season with the team. So this is your third game. One thing that never changes year to year at Notre Dame is as a team, you always go into the season with the goal of winning the national championship. And you prove that you had that kind of skill the week before losing that heartbreaker in overtime to the top ranked team in the country, Nebraska. So talk to me a little bit about what you remember of the mood of the team on campus as you headed into game three against a highly ranked Purdue team with one of the marquee players in the country. You know, it's, that's Notre Dame. You, you play the best week in and week out, and that's why you come, because you want to do that. Um, you have to remember back then, Nebraska was uh, like a wing T offense, and they were the number one team in the nation. And then Purdue offense couldn't be any different than what we played against the week before against Nebraska. And I don't think people give enough credit to our defensive staff um, to make that transition to play against a wing T team and then a five wide team the, the next week. And we were able to put, put all the stuff in and, and go execute. And, you know, I, I, we obviously won the Purdue game, but I think we did well enough on defense to win the Nebraska game as well. There's no question that you did. And let's talk about that stuff that you put in because uh, Breeze had faced a lot of zone defense in the first two games he played and just tore it up. I think the biggest headline from this game was that you were facing a Purdue team that had been averaging 45 passes a game, and you forced Purdue to throw it just 24 times and run it 43 times, and only 22 of those passes were by Breeze. The other two were trick plays. How were you able to take them completely out of their game? You know, on defense, what you do is uh, – I'm defense coordinator at my high school now. And the first thing I do is I look to see what does the opposing offense like to do. And I look at that and I say, you know what, they're not going to do that. 
And we looked at this, um, Coach Davey and the staff looked at this and said, hey, they like to throw the ball. Drew Brees, is, this is his campaign to win the Heisman. Uh, he wants to do it on a national stage against Notre Dame. He's not going to win the Heisman against us. And so our game plan was to come in and we want to knock him on his butt. Um, he's a great player, but, you know, you start thinking twice about throwing the ball and 45 times we're knocking that, that great player on his butt every single play. And so that was the game plan. We're coming after him. You, if you look at our defensive game plan, there was a, a lot of plays where we had 11, 11 men within three yards of the line of scrimmage. And from that, we would all out blitz or we would drop into cover three. And so, you know, you knock, like I said, you knock Drew, Drew Brees on his butt a couple of times. Quarterback thinks, uh, the coordinator thinks a little bit differently about calling those five wide um, throwing plays. Now, heading into the game, as big a matchup as the defense against Breeze was, a lot of the attention, if not most of it, was understandably paid, paid to the fact uh, that you had lost Arnez Battle. And that year, Notre Dame had an offense that heavily relied on option football. Uh, of the four potential backups, Gary Godsey was the one guy at 6'7", I think 240, 250, mm -hmm. that you wouldn't choose uh, to run the option. But the other three players were all freshmen, and you had spent so much time getting Arnez ready, the coaching staff had, because he was himself a rookie quarterback that no one else had taken a lot of snaps. So everybody was wondering, and the storyline, of course, was tight end playing quarterback. Uh, Purdue actually recruited Gary Godsey at the quarterback position, but he wanted to come to Notre Dame so badly he came as a tight end. So he had some experience, but that was still the story. As a defense, did you guys feel you had to do everything possible to make it so that Godsey didn't have to win the game by himself? You know, that's the mentality of, of any defender I, I know that's you know, worth anything, is that I don't care what the offense does. Our job is to stop these guys and not let them get in the end zone. That's what we're going to do. And so I don't care who the quarterback is. Um, that's our mentality is, hey, we're going to shut you down. We're going to try to knock you out, and you're going to, fit, you're going to fill us because we're, we're coming to get you. And that, that was our mentality. And, again, I don't care who, who our quarterback is or who we have on offense. I don't care if we play with nine players. We believed on defense that we were going to stop you and do enough to win the game. Folks, you're going to enjoy watching this game. Lots of big plays by the defense and a first-time quarterback who made the plays when he had to make them. So you did tell us that you liked our new format last week that was based in part on some suggestions that you, the fans, sent us. So we're going to do that again this week. We're going to stream <coughs> the entire game with the announcers, and Shane and I will jump in from time to time with analysis. We will do that uh, just like we did last week. Uh, we think you'll enjoy it, and we'll be rejoining you very quickly in just a few moments as there were a bunch of big plays early in this game for the Irish. So as they used to say, we're not streaming it, but roll the videotape. Back in South Bend, Indiana, the Boilermakers and the Fighting Irish getting set for their third game of the season. It's a beautiful football day, 57 degrees, low humidity, a very slight wind, partly cloudy, and what a difference, Bat, some 40, 50 degrees from only two weeks ago here in South Bend, Indiana, where on the field it felt like about 115. You know, if you're a passer like Drew Brees is, you are excited when you wake up and see a day like this. It just feels like a football day here in South Bend. It was about 80 degrees a week ago. Of course, the Irish battling the injuries. You've got a quick look of Irons, and there, of course, is Arnez Battle, who last week, and nobody knew it until the next day, broke a bone in his left wrist. He's probably out for the season. He broke it on the very first play, had surgery this week. We'll get a cast off for probably another month, but will probably sit out the entire year. What kind of effect, Pat? You lose a quarterback. They had the whole thing designed for him, the option. They were for two years getting him ready for this moment, and now you lose him, and you got a young quarterback to lead your way. Well, you, you know, the thing about – you think about Notre Dame really being an option team. They really are. Although uh, Battle is their leading rusher, most of those yards came on those impromptu plays. You know, scrambles, quarterback draws. That's what you have to replace with Gary Gotze, not so much the, the option plays. Now, with Gary Gotze, 6'7", as we mentioned, I think what Notre Dame will try to do in replacing those quarterback plays is use screen passes a lot more than we've seen in the past from Notre Dame. Gary Gotze is going to have to wait a little longer to get his first snap. Notre Dame deferred option until the second half. They did win the toss, so the Irish will kick off, and we'll see the big Gotze in the second series of the game. Gotze's dad is here. His brother is the quarterback at Georgia Tech. 
And he is playing home against Navy today, so his mother will be at that game. Boy, good, good. Two good return teams in both Purdue and Notre Dame. Matt McNew will handle the kickoffs in his collegiate debut. Yeah, really last key. Week. Yeah, really key for these kickers to keep it, to kick it deep out of the end zone if possible to avoid that guy from returning it. Man, he's fast. Vinny Sutherland under a 4 4 40 will return. Warmed away in South Bend. Sutherland at the 10 to the 20. He's knocked out near the 25 yard line. Good coverage by the special teams. Purdue starting it off up front. Some big guys, and this is where the experience is. Light, Murskowski, or Kobe, 310 center, Allen and Gorin. The backs and receivers, their basic set, one back, Cedric Brown behind the Heisman, hopeful breeze. Three wideouts, Winston Morales and the Speedy Sutherland. Tim Stratton is a very good tight end. And there he is, 89, next to Drew Brees, the 6'1 senior out of Austin, Texas, was not heavily recruited. Surprisingly, if you look at his career, you'd think everybody would have been after him. Good student, school of management, a 3.4 GPA, and a very good student, Pat, of the game of football. Absolutely. Well, in the 4.0 in the last semester, but yeah, very, very smart guy. Does not make a lot of mistakes. They're changing the football for Purdue. It's first and 10 on the 25 yard line. Typical game, Drees, Drew Brees will throw it up in the air about 45 times. Rolling is Brees. Surprise, surprise. He throws, and Tony Driver was all over Stratton for the incompletion. Good play by Driver. Got a couple of picks against Brees in a meeting a couple of years back. The Notre Dame defense, little change of front. Weaver, B.J. Scott getting his second straight start. Roberts is the key guy there in for Grant Irons on right end. The linebackers so impressive a week ago. Boyman, Harrison, Denman, the four defensive backs. This is the basic set, although we'll see a lot of nickel and dime, and we have the nickel package here for Notre Dame. Second and ten. And up, up the middle and stopped quickly is Cedric Brown. Gain of about three of the place, bring up a third and seven. Notre Dame today is going to run a nickel defense primarily and sometimes a dime, but you see one, two, three, four, five here. And again, a lot of man-for-man -man coverage. You want to run those crossing routes versus man-to-man -man coverage. But he'll see five, he'll see six. Now, ordinarily, you know, a third and seven is an uncomfortable down for a lot of teams. Purdue feels very comfortable in third and eight. Dime package, six DBs for Notre Dame on third and eight. Brees in the shotgun. Throwing hit Sutherland's hands. Jason Beckstrom, one of the extra DBs on the defense, and Notre Dame picking up where they left off a week ago as Purdue will have to punt. Well, hey, Anthony Weaver did a good job of getting in Drew Brees' face. Man for man coverage. You're going to see that most of today. Good jam at the line of scrimmage there. Again, last week, uh, Kent State ran zone primarily against Drew Brees. He ate it up. So Notre Dame's going to play man for man most of today. Joey Kethrell is back deep. Had that long 83-yard punt return with one of the sensational moves of the year for a touchdown. Travis Dorn. Oh, blocked. blocked! It's Earl. The Irish blocked it, and it was Jerome Earl on the block. And it will have the ball around the four-yard line. Glenn Earl on the block for Notre Dame. You know, that is the... Okay, Shane, it's hard to overestimate the importance of this blocked punt. So take us through the Glenn Earl block. You know, we put a lot of hours into special teams. I, I think the week before, we uh, returned a, a punt and a kick against Nebraska. And so this is a phase of the game. There's three phases, and this is just as important as the other two. And so we put a lot of time into working on blocking punts, blocking kicks, scheming it. Um, and so it, it's a huge play. Anytime I think there's a percentage in the NFL, if you block a punt, you have a 85 or 90% chance of winning that game. And it, what it just does for the mentality, what it does for um, the momentum, is just incredible, especially, like I said, with a, a guy, a quarterback, getting his first start. And that's the huge point there. That's the first drive of the game for Purdue. And you said the mentality is always to make sure that the offense doesn't have to win it by themselves. But what a, a great thing that was because we're going to, 
stay with you here as we go through this first possession, as you look at uh, a really a pretty talented offensive line. But it took a while, even though Notre Dame starts the drive at the five-yard line, it took a while to get in the end zone. Yeah, I, I remember, you know, it's, they're still working out the kinks, right? You got a, a brand-new uh, quarterback. You're running a new system. Uh, you know, Arnez, with Arnez at the helm, we, we ran a completely different um, system. So what, what we practiced all spring and what the offense practiced all summer and all year to this point, now they come in and, and do something different. So it, it's going to take a little bit anytime you have to, to have to run a new system. Now, clearly, Godsey was – just getting adjusted to starting a game in front of 80,000 fans at quarterback. And they struggled a bit on this drive that actually started at the four. Uh, And in fact, there's about to be a delay of game penalty here. And that goes right to the fact that it's new quarterback, new offensive plays to a certain degree. Uh, But Gotze ends up coming up with a huge play right after this that gets you into the end zone. And that, too, was critical to set the tone because I'm not sure there's many things that are more demoralizing to give the offense the ball on the four-yard line and have to come away with just three points. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I remember this, this, the feeling of being out there. And um, I'll tell you one thing, Gossi is a talented, talented quarterback. Um, the best thing about him was he was so cool. Nothing was too big for him. The moment was never too big for him. Um, and he was extremely capable. But I think about him and today's systems with the RPOs and all that. Like, Gossi is a good quarterback. He's a really good quarterback. But I think his best asset was just how cool and poised he was. And he was supposed to throw the ball here, but he saw that hole open and he knew what to do with it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he, he's supposed to throw that. Um, but he, he saw some green grass and he just took it. And, you know, for a guy 6'7, 240, he, he moves pretty well. Um, so I, I was proud of him getting in, getting in the end zone there in, in the first quarter, and that had to feel good for him. That's his dad. His dad played at Alabama. So that, that in itself is uh, breaking news, an Alabama guy wearing Notre Dame gear. But yeah. certainly the size of Godsey, as we're about to see on the replay, really came into effect here because he should have been stopped, but he kind of – shed the tackler like he was, you know, a small insect. It didn't even slow him down. Yeah, I mean, again, he's a, he's a big dude. I see all that green grass up there. You, you take that. Um, he's a big, strong guy. He's nimble. He's athletic. Um, and he comes from a family that's, that's really extremely athletic. At the time, his brother, I think, George, was uh, the head of had – the, had the, started at um, Purdue. And so he was throwing all the throwing, – or, uh, excuse me, Georgia Tech. Just throwing the ball, throwing the ball all over the place, and so comes from an extremely athletic family. And again, you know, the moment was never too big for him. So the Irish are on the board here, and we are going to join you again very soon. Shane has just shown uh, a kind of what he's doing now. He's coaching football as an assistant. He's the head soccer coach uh, at the school he works at out there in San Diego. Uh, but the next play, Shane will be able to talk about Shane. And we're looking forward to that. Let's go back to the live broadcast. Let's kick off. It's a short one. Sutherland at the 15. He can fly up to the 50. Well played Jerome Sapp for Notre Dame. Let's go back and look and see what uh, Gary Godsey saw as he he ran. He's trying to actually hit the man in motion here. This is Gatherall running a curl. But you're going to see that he sees a little hole opening here. Okay, doesn't force the issue. Yeah, see the hole? He sees this, okay? And, and then he goes, and he breaks a tackle right there. And then he really becomes a fullback from about the four-yard line in. Uh, really a powerful guy. And, to, and I think for everybody, the big question is, how do you replace those impromptu plays? Where do you go? And a good shot in a pat in particular at the five, and he got free. And there it takes over at the 33. Where he's hand up. Couple of yard pickup for Cedric Brown. The rushing has been a problem for Purdue. They have not been able to establish the run. This against weaker teams in Central Michigan and Kent State. In fact, Tim Stein says we've got to get more intensity from our backs. Yeah, well, you know, only they shared all three of these guys do. But Joe Tiller says, you know, if we rush for 200 yards a game, we aren't throwing the ball enough. He says, hey, we said we ain't throwing the ball enough. We were a throwing team. We know what we are. I don't recall hearing that from Frank Solich last week with Nebraska, do you? Or Woody Hayes in the old days. 
Single setback. Breeze throwing in a good glimpse, and the pressure got to Breeze. He's incomplete. Lance Legree, number 90, drilled Drew Breeze. And Brock Williams, number one, came off the corner. So what Drew Brees has seen this week is a lot different than he saw a week ago against Kent State when they played nothing but zone. Corner fire, corner blitz by Brock Williams, and then Lance Degree, the defensive tackle, got right in his face. One thing Greg Madison wants is a much more aggressive attack. He has the physical players. They can hit hard, and they can run. Absolutely. Dime package again. That's six DBs for Notre Dame on third and six. This man up here. Breeze rolling. Going, and it's way over Sutherland's head, and he was well covered by Shane Walton. And again, an impressive stand for the Notre Dame deep. Breeze is 0 for 4. One of the things you do when you go in motion is you determine, hey, if you see that guy run with them, you know you can get man-for-man -man coverage. But I want to tell you that Notre Dame defensive backs are doing a good job, but they're squatting. I think Drew Brees is going to have to throw the ball up team, up top, up, up top, because the defensive backs really are squatting. Drew Brees, one of the most frustrating games of his career a couple of years ago against Notre Dame. They had a chance to win it. They were up through two late picks to Tony Driver in the final minute. Notre Dame came down for the field goal. Travis Dorsch this time gets it off, and Howard was real close. Getheron allowing that one to go all the way to the end zone. And the Irish have the early momentum at Notre Dame Stadium, 7 0 early on. Back at Notre Dame Stadium, the Irish off to an early lead. Let's throw it down to our partner on the field, Bob Wischusen. Bob, take it away. All right. all right, Craig, thanks very much. Who said Gary Godsey couldn't run the quarterback draw, huh? Not a bad start for the guy who was actually not even recruited to Notre Dame as a quarterback. He was recruited as a tight end. That's where he played in high school. But junior season, first game, last drive before halftime, his high school coach knew they needed a bomb to be thrown. He put Godsey in. He threw a touchdown pass. He's been a quarterback ever since. Now, I'm not sure if these numbers mean anything, but his senior year of high school, pretty good numbers. 22 touchdown passes, only four interceptions. He's off to a great start today. Back up to you guys. Thank you, Bob. He was a much bigger guy when he got here even in high school, 265 pounds, and came on in the spring game. He was 12 for 23, his last really playing time, 148 yards, and took over. No offensive lineman is taller than he. <laughs> Got a good view. First and 10 at the 20. And off to Jones, and he's well played. Ralph Turner made the stop, back to Bob. What's also interesting, I talked to some of the Purdue coaches before the game. They didn't even have film on Gary Godsey other than high school footage, which you're about to see. He was recruited to Purdue as a high school player. They know he can throw the deep ball based on this, but that was basically the only footage they had to go back and scout Gary Godsey back upstairs. Good thing it was a good photographer shooting the high school games. His top target, Chris James, the best friend, is a wide receiver on Purdue. And they talked all week long about the big game. Second and nine, Jones again. The run game not working early for either team, giving up third and long. Well, his last start was his senior year in high school, November of 1998. Pretty good game, though. He threw for 448 yards and five touchdowns. And we talked to Gary yesterday. He certainly, you know, the game didn't seem too big for him. You know, he seemed like he was ready to, ready to come. There's his high school team. James. Chris was not recruited by many big schools. In fact, uh, he credits Gary for getting his scholarship to Purdue because they said, hey, who's catching all these passes? He was going to wind up in a Lehigh or a Connecticut, wind up playing big time Division I football. Nice soft toss, Gibbons. Gibbons at the 25, and he's knocked down short of first down yardage. That's what the Notre Dame Fighting Irish called their rocket screen. And again, this is what they talked to us about this week to replace the, you know, the impromptu plays of battle. They wanted to throw some screens, get the ball to David Gibbons, who turns into a pretty good running back. But good defense by Purdue. And it was eight yards, kept that receiver and screen in front of him, forced a punt. First big play of the game for the Boilermakers. Joey Hill bowled off to a good start. Vinny Sutherland is back, the all-time leading punt returner in Boilermaker history. He averages almost 13 yards a return. Well, that was almost blocked. Boy. Booming punt. Sutherland lost, lost it to the, the sun. sun. I believe yeah. you're right. And again, another Irish bounce. Tony Driver says, I'll take that right at the 10-yard line. Yeah, if you're a center fielder, you flip down the shades, but it uh, didn't happen. How about the little black of your eyes? 63-yard punt for Joey Hillbull, the sophomore. 
He spent his whole summer saying three words, ball drop, leg swing, and timing, and he had them all three working there. Go in depth on the Fighting Irish by logging on to MSNBC sports.com click on nbc's notre dame central which features player profiles game highlights audio interviews with coach bob davy and of course expert analysis my partner pat hayden yeah. msnbc sports.com the official website of nbc sports i think as well as drew Brees throws the ball this year to give him three downs it's just not you know it's <laughs> just not fair first and ten they're backed up at the 11 and Brees up there again looking for his first completion he's 0 for 4 look out Hand off on the left side, Seth Morales, and he comes up to the 20, a play normally run for Vinnie Sutherland, and they use the other wide out the soft weather in Indianapolis, Ryan Roberts in the stop. Ryan Roberts on the stop. Dan Morales, number 84 here in motion. You're right, Sutherland is usually the guy who runs it, ran it twice last week. They also have a pass in off of this uh, kind of formation. Good downfield block by Andre Henderson, number 83, the wide receiver. All these wide receivers for Purdue block pretty well. Morales, first collegiate start just a few weeks ago, and you could say that about several of the young Boilermakers. They are young at wideout in particular, and in the defensive backfield and linebacker as well. Flag is down on the handoff. Cedric Brown running to left side, and up to the 28-yard line. There's a flag down. Eight of nine, we'll see what the call is. There's coach Joe Tiller. Done such a remarkable job here at Purdue. Offside against the Irish. Uh, Joe Tiller, in his fourth year, for the first three years, really has turned this program around. Three straight winning season, three bowl games. Offside, defense, penalty decline, enough yards, first down. Game of nine, there's Joe Tiller, defensive coordinator here in the early 80s, but man, did he turn his old career around, his old philosophy, reinventing himself. Went to Wyoming, did great there. Then here at Purdue, he's turned it around. Purdue had, had just one winning season, no bowl games since 84. Three years under Tiller, three straight bowl games. They've won two of them. They've got excitement in West Lafayette again. They're selling out games. And Cedric Brown goes for a couple. And people are talking Purdue football now. Yeah, you know, Craig, they're not only talking about Purdue football. You know, potentially Mario maybe a Rose Bowl birth. First one since 1967. Uh, maybe a Heisman Trophy winner in Drew Brees. Very first Heisman Trophy winner if, if Brees were to win it. So uh, they should be excited. He has done an absolutely phenomenal job with this offense, which he's worked with for 14 years. You know, he said the origination of this offense actually was John Elway's high school out in California, Granada Hills. That's where it started as far as he was concerned. Second and eight at the 30. It's a unique offense and presents a lot of defensive struggles as well. Brown going wide to the left. So Breeze, who's 0 for 4 passing, with no success in the air, going to the ground a lot yeah. more than he usually does. Check the weather channel, see if hell is frozen over. They are running the ball a lot more than anybody anticipated. You're a weather channel guy? You want to Oh, yeah, absolutely. Hotel. I'm going to travel so much, buddy. <laughs> Defensive uh, coordinator Greg Madison. How about the challenge for him, Pat? you oh got to prepare for Nebraska, a &M. Now, all of a sudden, completely reversed with a situation where you have, like here, four wideouts, and the H-back is Stratton on the right side of the line. Okay. Empty set. Yeah, and man for man there. Third and nine. Brees, going to look to run. Gets to the 35, oh, and he got across. <laughs> the first down yardage to about the 40-yard line. Nice run by Drew Brees, a gain of 10. Denman and Jefferson on the stop. Drew Brees is an easy guy to like if you're one of his Purdue teammates because he, he's not a prima donna. Watch him look left first. Nothing there. Nothing there. And then he comes back. And then he just kind of takes off. But he, he doesn't slide here. I mean, again, I think he knew exactly. He needed about two more yards to pick up the first down. So his teammates love him for plays like that. Seems like quarterbacks are sometimes tougher in college than they are in pros. <laughs> Well, the defense is a little bit bigger. Yeah, I guess so. First and ten from the 40-yard line. Breeze thinking about an option, and we've got a flag thrown. It's the ball on the line. line. Yeah. For Purdue. Like someone may have moved illegally. How about that little option from Drew Breeze? Yeah. You know, a remarkable career at Purdue. Even in high school, he was 28-0-1, never lost as a starter in high school. And through high school and college. Fire to the snap. Dead ball. All start. Offense. Five yard penalty. Well, the right guard, right about in there, might have just, just kind of leaned just a pinch. 
Yeah, oh yeah, a little bit. Big 10 officiating crew, that's Ian Allen. But so far, 35 yards rushing, and get this, Pat, no yards passing. 0 for 4, is 0 Brees. for 4 so far, but first and 15 now for Drew Brees. He gives it off, back Cedric Brown, up to the 39. Well, you know, in the past few weeks, the way the defense has been going against Purdue, the zone, he's been picking the apart short passes. Notre Dame's not giving him that. And, and I think the defensive backs are kind of squatting, Craig. It's one of those things. I think they have to get a chance to get the ball upfield a little bit. As a matter of fact, Drew Brees told us on Thursday he felt that he get, could get the ball to Vinnie Sutherland on some deep routes. They haven't thrown the ball deep much in their first two ball games. They didn't have to because they're real soft zone. But I'll tell you, these defensive backs in Notre Dame doing a good job of crowding these wide receivers. The eyes of the Irish. Terrific defensive effort last week. It was good enough to win. Nebraska pulled it out in overtime. Breeze over the middle. He's got a receiver in Seth Morales. That's close to the first down. First completion for Drew Brees. Jason Beckstrom on a stop a gain of 11. Now, here's an uncomfortable down for them. Third and about uh, two yards. Patience by Drew Brees, and he's allowed to have the patience because awfully good blocking up front. Again, look left. The guy, he's always in balance. Drew Brees, his feet are always right. Again, coverage by Beckstrom, number 27. Just a little hook route, comes back to the ball, gathers it. And then Beckstrom actually saved the first down. The third two is actually kind of an uncomfortable down for Purdue. Got four wides in the H back tight end. They're looking at him in Stratton, and he's got it. Stratton, the tight end for the first down on third and short. That does not mean run for Purdue, as you saw him in the shotgun with nobody behind him. But Drew Brees, I think one of the reasons he's so accurate, he completes about 63% of his passes, is his footwork. I mean, he's always in balance. The ball, never, no wasted motion when he's throwing it. You know, the weight goes from the right to the left. He's, you know, always prepared. And again, he really makes very quick decisions, and then he's incredibly accurate. That's a pretty good combo. He's a walking record book last week, becoming the all-time total offense leader. He's going to own just about all the Purdue records. And up Brown again. He's bet at the front line. Gained only about one. Anthony Weaver and Harrison in on the stop. I'll tell you one thing. When, what was what Purdue and Jim Cheney, the offensive coordinator, is thinking about for Purdue, with all this man-for-man -man coverage in the outside, if you spread it, if you're able to pop, that runner through that initial line of defense, you have a chance for a big run. But I tell you, the Notre Dame defensive line has done a real good job of stopping that one back offense and not letting him get that big yardage once he pops. Split wide receivers, it's Sutherland near side, Morales the far side. In motion is Chris Randolph, the third tight end, a good blocker. Brown on the keep, on the take, and he goes out across the 40 yard line, getting the block from Randolph. Pretty good pickup, five yards. Up third and short for Purdue. Boyman in the stop. Purdue takes some very small line splits. You see how tight these guys are. There's hardly any little space in between these offensive linemen. They think that it that helps their pass protection, helps them pick up stunts. And boy, do they protect Drew Brees? Only one sack this year, 15 all of last year. And, you know, one sack about every 40 pass attempts. That six passes. And now 10 runs yeah. for Purdue, and that is totally unlike the book. Here's his tight end, Stratton, right here. He's a guy, third and four. Big third and four. Reeves. Going intercepted! Shane Walton gets a block! Shane Walton's going to go! All right, Shane, number 42, that's you. This is the play that gave Notre Dame control of the game. We're going to have some great replays here as you look back. Talk about the coverage you were in and what you saw that enabled you to be in the perfect place for the pick six. You know, we, we studied this, this formation a lot. And out of this formation, we know that they like to motion and the, and the motion guy would, would run a shallow crosser. And so our game plan was to, <clears throat> was to bang that shallow crosser to give me time to get, get over top or in this case, underneath, right? So I could have time to get come underneath and get the pick. Um, and I think it was one our whole play, I don't know if it was Denman or – um, or Tyrio Harrison, but they did a good job of, of banging the receiver, slowing him down just to, so I could undercut it. Now, you had a bit of a reputation that you kind of like to talk a little bit on the field, and the, uh, the legend was that you had had a few things to say to Drew Brees before this play. Is that correct? No, you know, Drew Brees was actually one of the, the nicer guys. Um, I only really spoke and if someone said something to me. Um, like I said, my mentality – Every time I, I put strap those pads on and put the helmet on, I, I was coming to knock people out. 
Um, and so that was my mentality. And if, if you want to get in the way of that, then that you're going to feel something. So that was our mentality as a defense. And other than that, just, just knock you out and make plays. And that's the persona that Drew has to this very day, just being one of the classiest guys who's ever played football. And he – apparently is going to be the next analyst uh, on Notre Dame football games, at least have a role on the broadcast when he decides uh, to retire. When you see yourself with that beautiful full head of hair, what yeah. do you think? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, my, my wife gives me a hard time because there's a picture of me in college. Um, she said, why can't you look like that anymore? Um, but it was, it was a fun time, man. You know, um, I had nothing but great things to say about Drew Brees. He's a phenomenal person on and off the field. Um, I, he, here in San Diego, he still reaches a bunch of people. He still has his effect here in San Diego. So he's a phenomenal person. And I bumped into him a few times, and he, he remembers that play as well. So it's, it's pretty funny. He, you know, all of all the, the millions of plays he runs, he still remembers stuff. Before we get back to the NBC broadcast, because you and I aren't going to jump in again until the third quarter, going up 14 to nothing, making those two huge defensive plays, A, how did that energize the defense even more? Did it allow you to be even more aggressive than maybe you might otherwise be against a quarterback who was capable of doing virtually anything on the field? You know, I, I think we, you stick to the game plan, right? It's, it's, it's working. What, what we put in is, is we're having success doing it. I don't, I don't think you change. Um, you keep running what you're running, and um, you, you make the offense pay for, for trying to do what they do. Now, you touched on it before, and everything I have read since and the interviews I remember to that day, that Gary Godsey was unflappable. Mm -hmm. So for the offensive unit as a whole, how much easier did it make for them? Because obviously you go in knowing, well, just the uncertainty because of uh, lack of reps, and, and this is NBC showing uh, success that Notre Dame had against Breeze in the previous game in Notre Dame Stadium, picking the football off. But how much do you think that helped the offense that they had that cushion? Because they are feeling pressure to be flawless, and it's hard to be flawless the first time a unit plays together, especially in a game. Yeah, definitely. You mentioned about us changing tactics. I think really what it does for the offense is it allows them to change what, what maybe they do. I think maybe they, they're not as aggressive anymore because we're up 14 points. We're up two scores. Um, they're not really moving the ball on us that well. Um, so it changes what they do. I think our, our offense probably maybe runs a little bit more just to eat up some of that clock, just to, to put a little bit more pressure on, on Purdue's offense. Well, those numbers that you see from Drew Brees, you know they're not going to last long, and they don't. So as we go back to the broadcast, the defense continued to force Purdue to run the ball more than they wanted to. But when Brees started throwing, he started having success. It's going to be a much closer game when Shane and I rejoin this broadcast. So sit back and relax. I know there's some Purdue fans watching this too. At this time in the Notre Dame-Purdue rivalry, it seemed like every game came down in the closing seconds. And this one will embody that as close to the final gun as any game could be. So back to the NBC crew. It only is good start ever, so he knows how to respond from the state. Look at Lowell spinning away inside the 45 driver on the stop again of six. Tony Driver, number 25, the free safety for Notre Dame, has played very well in his first two ball games. Ten tackles last week against Nebraska. He is number 25, had an interception. He's a free safety. He's the one who's going to fill this hole. And what you've noticed about Tony Driver is 210 pounds. When he hits you, you go down. You, know, you don't spin off his tackles too often. Second and five, lowers the single setback. Randolph in motion. And up again to low. It's working. Why not? Fumble, right? With the the fumble. Touchdown. Fumble! I think Notre Dame recovered that one. Boyman had the hit. Rocky Boyman may have caused Still that haven't fumble. seen a signal. Well, that ball came out early. Yeah. I know that. Notre Dame ball. Yeah, that ball came out early. Man, miscues for the Purdue yeah. Boilermakers to start off. A blocked punt, an interception, and now finally getting on a bit of a roll, a fumble. And the Boilermaker down. And there, there's Rocky Boyman, number 30. Boy, he, he has played awfully well, too. There's oh. the hit. The ball comes loose. That's Booman. Boyman. The official hits on the player. Gets his helmet right on the ball, pops out. And I think there were three blue jerseys around it. 
make the recovery. And it's Tar Tariel Harrison, number 51. There's one right there. Yep. There's the ball. Here's Boyman the again. There. You know, Rocky, being a linebacker, said to the coach that he wanted to stay in the lineup. And the coach, Rick Madison, said, hey, Rocky, you're a star. He said, no, I want to be in the nickel, and I want to be in on the dime packages, too. Every single down he wanted to play. And that's what yeah. the Irish needed, according to the defensive coordinator, Greg Madison. He had such a fiery effort. And a tough guy out there, and he had a great week last week. Julius Jones across the 40. The Purdue defense playing well against him. Sean Phillips in the stop at the one-yard game. Here's the size of the offensive line. They average over 304 pounds. When you look at Purdue's defense, they are very, very fast. But they're small. And you got a 300-pound offensive line there, and then you have some guys that average 260. Pounds wow. defensively. You know, you think you would think Notre Dame could be able to mash it at him, but Purdue has kind of responded pretty well in the running game so far. They have. They light on the ends in particular with Phillips at 251 right side and Dinkins left side at 259. Second and nine. Jones again and again. He's met by the front of Purdue. It's been a strange game because yeah. everything you expected has gone the other way. You haven't seen the Purdue passing, and you expected if Notre Dame would have success, it'd probably be powering the ball. Absolutely. There's uh, Brock Spack, the defensive coordinator of Purdue, former linebacker there, tough guy, likes the speed of this defense, really concerned about the youth. You have 10 freshmen that are on there too deep. Actually, three true freshmen who were high school players a year ago will play some today. Third and nine for Notre Dame. Irish one out of two on third down so far. Godsey in his first ever start. And snap on the blitz going. He nearly found his man in Javen Hunter. He was hit hard by the blitzer, Brady Doe. And Notre Dame will have to punt. Well, he does hang in there in the pocket, though. Brady Doe is the free safety, number 38, right here. Comes from a long way. You see the hole. I mean, a tremendous hole. Godsey doesn't flinch, though. I mean, that's one of those plays. I think you you watch that tomorrow and you say, this guy's got some courage. You knew you are going to take a shot. That's a good early sign for Notre Dame, even though it was incomplete. See Gatsy with the poise back there. No bone. Wow, another good play. Hey, Boomer Sutherland, such great hang time, watches it. And finally, Purdue gets a bounce. It took the entire quarter to get a break. 58-yard punt. Drew Brees is back in the attack. When we come back, the Irish lead 14-0 after one. We'll be right back after these words from your local station. Our aerial views are courtesy of the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. Goodyear providing aerial coverage of the world's sporting events for more than 75 years. Purdue and Notre Dame. Historic battle, 55th Street meeting. They've been meeting since 1896. Separated by only two hours. Route 25, Route 31. That we took the drive, very nice. Through yeah. Indiana, first and 10 of the 20. Lowe, who was hit hard by Boyman, but was okay, shaking up a bit for the carry for five yards. Greg, how about the play selection in the first quarter? 15 runs for Purdue and seven passes. Now that's their 16th run in seven passes. Now, I think what Joe Tiller is saying, he's saying, hey, they should be, if we can get those guys to that first line with man-to-man -man defense, we're going to have a chance for a big, big run. But they've not been able to make that initial pop. Last week, for example, they passed 54 times and ran only 37. And this year, 88 passes, 77 runs. Here's another run. Wow, yeah, this is Low. this is not Purdue, and, and you got to say Notre Dame has taken them out of the ribbon. This is a passing team. Joe Tiller says we know who we are, and he's you know they almost look at the uh, run as is irrelevant. That's right. In fact, the offensive coordinator said to us, Jim Cheney, he said, you know, I'm emphatic to the running needs, but but not really. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got four wide outs, empty backfield on this set. Third down and three. They're two for five and third down. All this is man for man up here. He likes Stratton here, the tight end. He's got him at the 30. First down. Short-handed receiver and a bit of a free spirit is Tim Stratton for the catch. Ron Israel on the coverage. You know what Tim Stratton does? He gets really good body position. You know, he's right here. You, you know, you see the man for man bump and run. He knows it's four downs, but it's like basketball. He gets got body position, kind of screens the defender out. 
and he knows where the first down is. He's a great volleyball player in high school. His coaches sometimes kid him when he's blocking poorly and say, hey, Strat, quit blocking like a volleyball player. Was not selected as a captain. We'll tell you that story as we move along. <laughs> Early in the second quarter, it's 14-0 Notre Dame. First and 10. He's looking pass again. Faking, now going long for the speech to Sutherland. Got a step. He's got it. Walton on him. And Sutherland knocked down at the 14-yard line. There is a flag There is down. a flag down in the backfield, and it could be yet another. Well, they make error, but we'll have to see. Yeah, but remember when Reeves said to us Thursday, hey, I think I'm going to have to take some shots to Vinny Sutherland downfield. It might have been roughing on, on the Irish. Yep. Yeah, personal foul on the Irish, so that'll stand. But Sutherland with tremendous speed. Again, it's going to be a late shot on Drew Brees, which is the penalty. Good pickup on the blitz. Pump fake. You, know, you just felt that they were crowding those receivers sooner or later. That's pretty good coverage by Walter, but a great throw and a terrific catch. Right here. Okay. What's the pump fake? There, a little hit fake, but pretty good coverage down the line. Just right over the top. And then on the other end of the play, the roughing the passer of Drew Brees. Late show. Uh, uh, uh. They're going to call it anything. You, know, you have, you have a high school trophy candidate. They're going to call it. You gave it a good Lawrence Olivier. <laughs> So Sutherland, a 53-yard gain, a hyper guy will only get about 30 plays. They go half the distance, and all of a sudden it's first and goal at the seven. Single setback is low. Breeze Randolph in motion. They go the other way low. He's got a big hole, and touchdown for Moore. Uh -oh. uh -oh. Good sneaky play by offensive quarter Jim Cheney at the tight end going to the right and normally blocks and low right to the left. Really good call by Jim Cheney and one thing about Drew Brees I mean he doesn't discourage easily you know a couple of big passing plays they're very you know they're going to stick with this running game until Notre Dame really kind of kind of takes that away good block by Matt Light the left tackle Murskowski the left guard. Dorsch on the extra point got a big leg and he's got it. So off the big play to Sutherland, Drew Brees has his Boilermakers on the board. It's 14-7, Irish. Craig Benavini back with Pat Hayden at Notre Dame Stadium. Vinny Sutherland saying hello. West Palm Beach native. And the man who scored the touchdown, Montrell Lowe, who had only 51 yards rushing coming in. He already has 46 in a touchdown as Purdue battled back from miscue to get back in the game. Dorsch will kick off for Purdue. Thomas Dorsch will kick off. Julius Jones. Julius Jones will win 100 yards. Now Dorsch has kicked 11 balls completely out of the end zone. It's deep, but Jones really fumbled the ball. He's thinking about taking it out, and Aaron O'Neill and the Irish will start at the 20-yard line. Let's go down to Bob Wachusen with the injured quarterback on his battle for Notre Dame. All right, guys, thanks very much. Arnez, how hard is it for you not to be out there? Oh, it's very hard. You know, come out of here and seeing all these fans and uh, the team being pumped up. It's hard not to be in there, but I'm behind them 100%. We're about to get a look last week at the injury. Can you kind of explain it? Because it's hard to tell exactly where you got hurt. Yeah, after I scrambled out, uh, I was able to evade a, a defender. And uh, after I delivered the ball, I was hit late. And I, as coming down, I tried to break my fall and broke, you know, fracture my left wrist. Can we take a look here? We've got a... a some type of a brace on the wrist. How long do you expect to have this on there? Uh, just to the healing process is over with. Uh, right now, going to see doctors and hand specialists and just try to let this thing heal up so I'll be able to go back in and have this. What do you think of the start, Gary Godsey, in the offense? I think he's coming out conservative. Uh, we have some big breaks with defense and special teams, but he's hanging in there. We're going to make some adjustments, and uh, he have a successful game. All right, good luck. Hopefully, you'll get back at some point this year. Thanks a lot. That's our next battle, guys. Back upstairs to you. Thank you, Bob. Julius Jones with a nice pickup on first down. Well, Julius, you know, they really haven't. The Irish have not had a lot to do in the uh, on offense this week, really even last week. You know, it's big runs by uh, Arnez Battle, but they need to get Julius Jones going. They need some production out of the running game. First down and 10. Gotzi pass against Kaplan. has got a screen to Jones. Has a blocker. Look at the move for 40. Jones flying at the 50. He's knocked down at the 40-yard line. Jim Jones made a big block for Julius Jones on a big gainer for Notre Dame of 29 yards. Give Kevin Rogers, the offensive coordinator, some credit. Said to us yesterday, you know, we're going to miss those draw those draw plays to battle, how are we going to replace those with the screen passes? We've seen two of them, one to Givens, this time with Julius Jones. Perfect timing. You know, the offensive lineman timed it. They blocked their guys early. It was Jim Jones, number 55. 
There's Gandy, 69. Jones kind of wraps his guy up. Good block downfield by a wide receiver, Johnston, too. First and 10 at the 39. High formation. Jay Johnson in motion. Jones straight up. Good block and big room for Jones at the 30. All the way to the 20-yard line. Ralph Turner from his strong safety spot making the stop after a gain of 18. Julius Jones needs to become the go-to guy for the Irish offense. I mean, he is a very explosive player, but he's also a dis disciplined runner. Seasonal hole, bounces it out. Big block, I think, by his tight end, Dan O'Leary there, allowed him to bounce it outside. He's got speed and he's got explosiveness, but I think what you like most about him, your coach, is how disciplined he is in the runs. Watermaker, defensive coordinator, Brock Spax, said to us this week that he Believe it or not, really would have preferred to go against Battle in the option attack because of his fine speed defensively. And this style of offense they weren't quite as prepared for. It may not be as well as man for as Gotzi in that time. Well played by Craig Terrell who came up to sack the young quarterback at the 30. Craig Terrell, one of those 10 freshmen in the two deep we were talking about, inside tackler, uh, inside tack, inside player. They, they like him more, really, as a run defender, but incredible. He's number 92 inside. Uh, he just kind of splits the blocks. High school had 27 sacks his senior year, so it does have some pass rushing ability. Young team, a year or two, this defense is really going to be good. Red shirt freshman, second and now 19 after the loss of nine. Godsey has twin to the left. Gibbons in motion. Gibbons has it. Dropped the ball at the 30. And... It is incomplete. He nearly had a completion and a fumble, but they'll call it incomplete. The third screen call of the day. That was, uh, once again, that inside rocket screen, they, they call it. David Gibbons, part wide receiver right here. Little down here, he slips behind these guys. That's where it's supposed to go. Had something going there. Mitrione, number 98, was uh, there to make a play. Gibbons frustrated the first couple of games. Talked to Bob Davey and the staff about becoming more involved. That time he dropped the ball, third and 19. I got twins to the left. David Hunter, the receiver to the right. Oh, great. Trying to throw a screen. Well played by Matt Mitrione all over Tom Lipinski, the fullback. Boy, did Mitrione read that? I mean, he had a stunt going on. I mean, he had a stunt to Mitrione, but then he felt those offensive linemen pulling out there. He's right in here. Well, he's going to feel it, and then he's going to go with the flow. Here he is, excuse me, this guy. But you see, he feels those offensive linemen out in front. He knows it's a screen and makes a play. So a really good play by Mitrion. Nick Seta is two for two in his career. As long as 32. This would be 47 for the sophomore. And a 32-yarder against AM. Adam Tibble on the hold. The boot by Seta. Does it have enough? It does! Well, the special teams for the Irish this year, all of them, coverage, return, kicks, have really been good. Set has been a surprise. He was not the regular kicker, but he was shocking in the preseason scrimmage. So good, he displaced David Miller, and here's a little taste why. From downtown, he hits the 47-yarder, and the Irish go up by 10. Well, it looks like he kind of expected it. Yeah, you, know, <laughs> you like that out of your kicker. You like a guy who get too excited about it. Great athlete. They say he doesn't get flustered. He wasn't there. And Bob Davies' club is up by 10 in South Bend. <laughs> Off the field goal from 47, Nick Setta has put the Irish up by 10. And Drew Brees waiting to get another chance after scoring a touchdown in the last Boilermaker drive. All right, good. Let's do this. Matt McNew will kick off for Notre Dame. And again, it's Ennis and Sutherland. Back deep. The kick again goes to the speedy Sutherland at the five. For the 20. Not much room to find. And he's taken down. 22-yard gain. Terrence Howard made the stop. For more fighting Irish sports information, log on to UND. Dot com where you'll find highlights and audio clips of Notre Dame's football coaches and players. Plus each week, UND.com offers fans a chance to submit questions to a featured Notre Dame player. That's UND.com, the official athletic site 
of the University of Notre Dame. Well, you know, almost mid-second quarter, Drew Brees has only thrown nine passes. Ordinary, he may throw that in a series. He threw, what, 83 in one game against Wisconsin, an NCAA record. He completed 55. Barry Alvarez, the Badgers coach, said there's nobody better in the country at quarterback than Drew Brees. I tell you, if you're Bob Davey, though, you, you are delighted to see him hand the ball off to any running back. And what you don't want to see, Drew Brees, is back in that shotgun and, you know, looking for one of those wide receivers. Greg Madison feels they have a pretty good read, they think, on, on uh, Purdue. Think anytime they see Brees underneath center, it's either a flank reverse or a run. And he passes, they say, 100% out of shotgun. They've been showing a lot of the great hits in recent weeks to their defense, and he says it's contagious. And one of the keys to Notre Dame's D, their physical presence. Inside handoff low, Denman ran up to him, and he dragged him for a couple of yards. We're going down, gain of four. And there, there was a change of pace, a little run out of that shotgun. A little inside handoff. A little sneaky schnook yeah, there, huh? He said, hey, before, before 100% pass out of this. Good little setup, good kick out block there by Brandon Gorn. Number 77, the right tackle. Well, Madison told us he wants the fool to do as well. Show three, rush four, bring back, switch up the looks for Drew Brees. He's such an intelligent guy. He's got trips to the left, but he's looking right. Now some room to run for Drew Brees. Beckstrom trying to grab him, just tripped him up as he got over the 45 near the 47. He fumbled then, the ball, but they said it was down. Yep. Yep. 8 of 15. I mean, he, he is a dangerous player. You know, what did Bob Davies said yesterday? He's got really strong legs. You know, you worry so much about his right arm. Forget about his right and left legs sometimes. 6'1", 215 pounds. Really good mobility in the pocket. Not forcing the ball after the one interception. No panic in his eyes. You know, you just sense that uh, even though he's down 17-7, to 7, he feels like, hey, I've got the game under control right where I want him. But the offense cooking a little bit better now, too. First and 10 at the Purdue 47. Lowe's the single setback. Randolph in motion to the right. This time a pitch to Lowe. Getting some blockers. And no, he could not figure out Jerome Sapp. Flag on the play. Well played, though, by Jerome Sapp, the sophomore from Houston, number 20 for Notre Dame. Well, well played until it was perhaps Sapp that got the face smack as infraction. Incidental face mask on the defense. Five yard penalty from the previous spot, still first down. I think they call that a number 20 there, Jerome Sapp, incidentally, yeah, right there. That's, that's, uh, he got his five yards worth, didn't he? I don't yeah. know if that was incidental or not, <laughs> yeah. but his hand just happened to find the bars there. Looked a pinch more serious than the <laughs> five yard variety of face mask. Wasn't coincidental either, I don't think. Now, now Drew Brees has thrown the ball once deep. And that was a completed pass. And I feel with the tight coverage he's getting, he's going to have to get some protection to get the ball up top. Receivers flying out to the right as Breeze hands off inside. To low. Gets near the 40-yard line. You know, no one has emerged in the backfield for Purdue coming in, but it looks like, in this game at least, Montreal Low is really taking over. Sophomore season, a year ago, as a freshman kind of seized the position, Craig, and had a nice year, 841 yards. But, uh, you're, you know, in, in this offense, you're like telephone operators. People don't notice you when you're a running back at Purdue. You want to be a wide receiver. <laughs> 60 yards, 11 carries for Low. The six yard touchdown as well. First and 10 at the 41. Luke, he's got the ball. Now he's going to come back left side to Brown. Oh and he's got a lot of real estate. 30 yard line, 20 yard line. And Sapp knocks him down. And that was a good fake by Breeze, who really held the ball for a while. Breaking to the right. 25 yard gain. Sapp again in the stop. Okay, boy, is this beautifully set up? And a great call by Jim Cheney. This is Lo uh, Brown who's going to fake the, the uh, little handoff here, and he's going to be the receiver. Watch these offensive linemen, too, get out in front. A Kobe, number 56, Allen, there's Kowski. I mean, look at the room here. Good box right in here. Well-designed play. 
shaky at the start, Pat. You can sense the Purdue Boilermaker offense is heating up. A couple of good drives in a row. Breeze again rolling, looking for Sutherland in the end zone. Now looks across the middle. Back to Sutherland. Flag is down. Breeze Flag is down. Now, I am not sure whether he called uh, Breeze across the line of scrimmage. It looked like it was behind it from here, but the official, the side judge, was right there. Oh, ineligible. Ineligible receiver. Breeze absolutely disagreeing. You know, offensive linemen, they, they, they have a timer in their head. They feel, hey, the ball should be off at a certain time. The, the ball was held for a long, long time, and maybe that's, that's what happened. Ineligible receiver on the offense. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Still first down. So it negates the 14-yard gain. As you see Joe Tiller, the head coach, talking to Chris Randolph. Tiller now in his fourth year, 27-12 as the head man of the Boilermakers, but he said this was not a benchmark game today. Big game, but not a benchmark game. I kind of think it is a benchmark game, though, Pat. I think any time you play Notre Dame, and you're from the state of Indiana, which Purdue is, it's a big ball game. A.T. Simpson wide to the right, along with Morales. they got twins to the left as well, but they're going to hand it off to Lowe at the 20. Maybe a yard or so. Denman, the Notre Dame made the stop. Lance Legree and Ryan Roberts, Anthony Weaver, B.J. Scott, they've all done a pretty good job in that defensive line. And Mike Brown does a good, good job as their leprechaun. He's hyper. He is a hyper leprechaun. He's one of the first guys to greet anybody in the Irish who gets in the end zone. There's a great speed for a leprechaun. <laughs> well, he used to play high school football. <laughs> he shows. Second and 14. Here's that big tight end Stratton again. Well, this is the bubble Empty screen. Set. Yeah, they uh, they call oh, timeout. Some confusion. Murray's going to call timeout this time. We'll take a break. It's 7:27 remaining in the half, and Notre Dame leads, but Purdue's on the move. 17-7 Irish. Back at Notre Dame, the Irish leading 17-7. The score can a little confusing when you look at how Notre Dame has done it again, Pat. It's been the special teams king. Notre Dame's attack, but Purdue is starting to warm up offensively. They've out yardage them 223 to 67 so far. Second and 14. Breeze looking end zone toward their Sutherland's going to squeak through for the touchdown. He got by both Williams and Walton, the corners. A good quick move and a touchdown for Purdue. No lead is safe against this offense. And as we said, they just don't seem to get discouraged. Vinny Southern is a big play guy. Caught a 99-yard touchdown pass a year ago. 112 career catches for the Boilermakers. He's a, he's a good player and a very fast one. 19-yard touchdown for Vinny Sutherland, who, as you see, the extra point made. Did not play in the first game. He had a good week last week. He was suspended for the first game for conduct detrimental to the team. Well, this wasn't conduct uh, detrimental to the team, I want to tell you. The, the slant, he you know, ran a really good job running the slant, catching, and then breaking a the tackle. Take a look at that. He is right down here. First a pattern, good route, good release, gets off, the, off of Walton, cuts inside, bad angle there by the safety, allows him to break that tackle. Good, patient throw by Drew Brees once again. First to release. You're never going to be able to catch the touchdown if you can't avoid the bump at the line of scrimmage. Then you make that guy miss. That was Tony Driver. Tony Driver took a, you know, a, a real deep angle, and Sutherland just cut right underneath him. Perfect throw by Drees, though, allowed him to make the run after the catch, and Joe Tiller should be very, very happy. Starts with protection always. That's Matt Light, 78, clearing the way. That's just uh, you know good play all the way around. You know, you got to be in good shape to be the coach of Purdue because you do a lot of clapping <laughs> after those touchdowns. Their arms get weary at their way. 17-14. Good ball game. Driver is deep at the 10. Tripped up. And he's knocked down at the 15-yard line. Tom Vaughn made the stop. And Purdue clicking at all sides of the field right now. Near the conclusion of today's game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet will make a contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. There you go. 
a shot of Notre Dame Stadium expanded a few years back. Another sellout today. And you look at the what we were talking oh, about yeah. a moment ago before the touchdown is the offense of Purdue has dominated. Dotsie has not had to do much yet. And now that was a bot to get to the bot offense. Punt, interception, and a fumble, right? Yep. Scored 14 points off miscues. That's the handoff. That was telegraphed, and Julius Jones taken out quickly by Brian Dinkins. The slight but quick left hand loss of three. Brian Dinkins, number 50. You mentioned 259 pounds. Kind of a real speed player. It didn't look like the offensive line had the right snap count, but uh, Brian Dinkins had the snap count. How courageous is Kevin Rogers going to be to throw here at his own 13 with a guy who's only thrown five in his career? Well, I think Gatsy looks pretty poised right now. He's yep. gotten the ball downfield a lot, but looks pretty good. He's got receivers on both sides. He's going to throw. Look out! And it just went off the hand of the intended receiver, Joey Getherall. A couple of Purdue guys had some wide eyes as that pass is coming near side. Yeah. Sean Woodyard, I'm sure. Woodyard on the cat. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're right. Woodyard, number seven for Purdue, the corner. Really, yeah. Joey Getherall really saved six points for his team because number seven, Ashante Woodyard, was, all, was right there to pick that one off and score. Third and 13 now. Fisher's a good screen player. He's in the, in the ball game. Gotsi on the shotgun. Plenty of time. Throw in complete, but it'll be way short of the first down. Holloway, the tight end. And Aiken Adell made the stop, a 6'3 junior out of Grand Prairie, Texas. Well, Adell, number 13 down here. He's the guy that makes the stop. Now, last year, this guy was an a great pass rusher. 11 sacks for the border maker. They put him off in the uh, defensive backfield. There's the Mr. Gosney, John Gosney. Awfully tough watching your son. And his wife is in Atlanta watching their other son, George, who will be the starting quarterback for Georgia Tech later on today against Navy. Yep, Barbara is the manager of the gap in uh, Tampa. I guess have some large players too because Gonzi <laughs> says he can get some now that he's slimmed down to the spelt T35. Sutherland squeaking free for a few yards before Denman caught up with him. So Purdue moving on offense, playing well now on Dean within three of the Irish in Notre Dame. Welcome back to Notre Dame. Craig Benavini, Pat Hayden, 17-14 Notre Dame leading. As Drew Brees has led two straight scoring drives now, he's warming up. He's a big man on campus in a variety of ways. Sigma Chi yeah. quarterback, yeah, it's his fraternity, Sigma Chi's. Some pretty good quarterbacks. He uh, drops by the fraternity house a few days a week for lunch. Yeah, he said he had no idea all those other quarterbacks happened to go to that. That's hard to believe, but he said, nope, it's Drew. First and 10. Low has been the man. What do they do in the, uh, carry. the alumni game? Who plays quarterback <laughs> when the uh, Sigma Chi's all play? You're right. It's a real battle there. Oh, it just brings back the lore of Purdue right football. Over. You Denver. see the names like Bob Greasy. Lance Legree, and the success in the, the uh, mid to late 60s. Rose Bowl, hey, last Lee. one they went to. And uh, Drew trying to lead them there this year. Well, you know, they, they have a legitimate shot, obviously, the Big Ten. Tough, tough conference. But they uh, play a couple of the big games at home, Big Ten conference oppo opponents at home. And they're tough at ross Eight Stadium. Low. Matt in the backfield quickly, driver, driver stepping yeah. up to make the stop. You know, one thing, Pat, we didn't look at the numbers we just showed you and say, hey, guys, you know, we're killing ourselves here because we're moving the ball, and if we didn't make the miscues, we'd be leading this game instead of trailing. Yeah, but if you're Notre Dame, you say, hey, we're causing miscues. You know, yeah. we're, we're a good defensive team. We played three good defensive games in a row, and, and there's no let up. And one more time, you saw Tony Driver at free safety fit in the hole, and he does, you know, the guys don't break many of his tackles. No, they, they really don't. The question the Irish may have to answer is can they win it straight up or are they going to need all the other little things, right. special teams, the big defensive stops, because the offense has really not done a lot so far. Well, this 11 men up at the line of scrimmage. It's 11 defensive players right there. Twins to both sides of the field. Brees looking left, throwing it off the hands of Sutherland. That time, Brock Williams' left quarterback was all over him. Well, Brock Williams, you know, playing corner takes an awful lot of confidence and the short memory. There are 11 guys here. You know, usually there's somebody back here, but there's nobody there. So if you get a little protection and get up here, you got a chance for a big play. But Brock Williams right down here, it wouldn't pass interference. It was a good play by Williams. 
And he does, uh, he brings a little bit of an attitude to this Notre Dame defense that they haven't had in a while. Senior out of Hammond, Louisiana. Special team so big in recent weeks for Notre Dame. Getherall is back deep. Walsh gets the puck off. Getherall never fair catches. Makes a quick move to the 15. Now he's going to come the inside. Got some room. Up to the 30. Makes a move around the kicker. And he's finally knocked down at the 45-46. Oh, boy. Yeah, Dan Walter that. with a block. And Getherall, he's pretty good at taking out those kickers, too. Yeah, he did last week, week with a big punt return. He is a fun guy to watch. The nickname, the jockey, because he's small, but boy, does he play really large. The guy can make guys miss, knows how to set blockers up. And how would you like to be the player trying to bring him down? Where'd he go? Back in a moment. And the Irish up by three points, 3.57 to go. Let's go down to Bob Wischusen. All right, guys, thanks very much. Well, Steve Adazio, the offensive line coach for Notre Dame, several different times here in the first half, has huddled his group on the sideline. Pat, you've mentioned several times how undersized Purdue's defense is up front. Well, they're doing a lot of different stunting, running a lot of different games and blitzes with the safeties. And so far in the first half, and I'm sure the stats will prove it out, that has confused Notre Dame's offensive line. It's been a constant source of conversation on their sideline. Back up to you. Yeah, Mitrione, one of those, one of those stunts stopped the screen. High formation behind Gotsi. Johnson and Gibbons have gone wide to the left. The inside hand up to Fisher, flagged down to the play. Host of the front line for Purdue on the stop, led by Landon Johnson. Landon Johnson. Yeah, the other guy in for Purdue and now, Brent Botts, number 42, a guy that Brock Spack is really happy to have back off an injury he against Offside. the uh, Purdue Offside. team. Purdue. There was some concern. I'm not sure if it was Mitrion in this play or not, but they were concerned about Mitrione getting a quick jump on the right tackle. Offside, defense. Five yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat, first down. Might have been botched though on that particular offside. First and five. It was something that the Irish were somewhat impressed that Mitrione gets such a good jump. But look at that. Well, they, they got the ball here on the four yard line. That's, they scored the TD, but other than that, but uh, not been terribly productive. Really haven't rushed the ball very well. Whoops. Another jump. Just not quite in sync. Sometimes that happens with a, a, a starting a new quarterback, but they've had all work all week to work with Gary Gotze. Saw a sign on campus this week, and Gotze we trust. Prior to the snap, dead ball, false start, offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. Well, they had the four-yard touchdown on the first after the block, but they've also had three where they've gone seven yards, one yard, and three yards. And then they had the 50 yard where they let up into the field goal. So they're having trouble but you know, even, Arnell's battle. Yeah, but even when Arnell is, was quarterback, and they, they really weren't running the ball well. I mean, they had some nice scrambles, nice quarterback draws, but they weren't really running the ball well with the tailbacks between the check tackles. And up, a fake hand up. Oh, Nazi then is hit Boy. hard by the charging Purdue line. Aiken Adele came in, a guy who had. 11 sacks a year ago, but not this year, and he comes in hard. And that's what Adel should be doing, rushing the pass. He is number 13, coming from the backside. Again, this real quick, no chance Jim Jones, the left guard, has a chance to get out here. Because uh, Adel is so quick off the corner. You know, good pass rushers, that first step is when they beat you. And that's just what Adel did. His 12th, he told us yesterday, he likes to collect license plates. Traveled a lot with his family. What was it? Kansas is the ugliest license yeah. plate. Likes that Texas plate, though. Until they redesigned them. Roll over the middle. This one is caught by Gibbons. It'll get some yardage back. A gain of nine. Gilbert Gardner. We'll talk about some of the light guys. The 216 true freshman linebacker right there made the stop. Unbelievable. Number 16, you, you, you can tell by wearing the number 16, he's probably not supposed to be a middle linebacker. You know, he's supposed to be red-shirted this year. 216 pounds has started three straight games at middle linebacker right here. Their normal starter, Joe Oden, sidelined a month ago with a back injury, just starting to practice now. They hope to get him back very soon. Godson, under some pressure, feels it, and he's going to run. At the 50, not getting by Landon Johnson. Good play in third and eight. Boy, unless Notre Dame gets this running game going, they're going to have some problems. And they really haven't run the ball consistently in three games. They've had some great defense. They've had some terrific special teams. And they've come up with some pass plays in the passing game. But they have not been able to run the ball much. It forces too many passes, passing situations like this. 
And that's how your quarterback goes down when you get tackled by Landon Johnson. Donald Winston has gone back for Purdue to receive. Fifth year senior out of Indianapolis, Indiana. We talked about Sutherland being a hyper guy, and Joe Tiller says he can only play about 25 <laughs> or 30 plays. Works uh, himself out. Maybe the excitement is catching up with him. Hook bold on the punt. Winston will come up. No one's going to let it go at the 15. Takes a boilermaker bounce. And it's finally knocked down. All is down by Notre Dame. By Chris Ura. And Purdue will take over first and 10. Coming up on the Sun America Halftime Report, Bruce Beck will be in our New York studio with college football scores and highlights of the top 25, plus an Olympic report from Hannah Storm in Sydney. We'll have that coming up at halftime. What's the light uh, ceremony last night, lighting the flame? Terrific, the Olympic torch. Didn't in think fact, I didn't think I was ever going to get up the, uh, <laughs> the torch. It took a little while. <laughs> the music composed by a gentleman by the name of Kenneth Dye, who is the band director right here in South Benny. Composed some of the music for the entrance. It was really spectacular. However, Kenneth did all that and still is here today. He was not there yesterday. He spent a long time working on it. First and 10 at the 18. Brown, who's the running back, ran into Terrio Harrison. Minute left in the first half. Purdue has two timeouts. That was the first zone defense I've seen from Notre Dame in this entire first half. So that, that's one where Joe Tiller, I think, wants to get Drew Brees back and just kind of you know, finding those holes in the zone, which he does so well. Just a real change of pace. Down 44 seconds left in this first set. Looks go. like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised, actually. He, he's hot. You know, because Joe Tiller said, hey, we throw until we get hot, and then we keep on throwing. And they're hot. And they're hot. Second and four. And the zone again. And these guys back here kind of tell the quarterback it's a zone. Freeze, safety handoff, Brown. He figures he's on the road, up by three. He'll go into halftime with that lead. Harrison on the stop. Goes in with some offensive momentum because they were very shaky starting out, but they did move the ball last couple of series. The Irish offense has not been impressive. However, again, it's the other guys, the effort, the physicality, and creating miscues that has had Notre Dame on top by three. Let's go down to Bob Wischusen. All right, guys, thanks very much. Coach, your offense sputtering somewhat in the first half. What adjustments do you make for the second half? Well, first of all, we knew they were going to blitz us, and uh, they are certainly doing that. We're not executing as well as we can on offense. We hit the screen on them. Julius Jones one time squirted through there against the blitz. we got to come back and have a plan for the blitz. When they're not blitzing, they're twisting up front. You know, I think defensively we're playing solid. we got to find a way to cover number 14. There's no question that they're going to go to number 14 uh, on offense. Uh, so we got to settle down. We got a young quarterback in there. I think the surrounding cast on offense has to play better. I'm not sure we've really given Gary Godsey a chance because we've broken down on protection so much. Coach, thanks. Good luck in the second Thank half. You. Craig, back up to you. Thank you, Bob. And we now take you over to New York at the half here. It's 17-14 Notre Dame directly down to Bruce Beck in our New York studio with the Sun America Halftime Report. 27 times for 133 yards. That is highly unusual for this Purdue team. Mm. Now, again, Joe Tiller right now has to, what, he, what he's thinking about most concerned right now is, is his stopping, you know, the return game of Notre Dame. They've been very, very good. Bob Davies, what he's worried about is, hey, can we get that running game going? Can we get Julius Jones some little a, a crease or two to pop through? Davey and uh, Tiller both in their fourth years respectively at the schools. Davies record now 22 and 17. That could have been, ooh, we almost had a tough one last week against Nebraska. Forgotten now as Notre Dame has big business with Purdue today. Julius Jones, oh boy, 15, he's got a big hole, 20. Oh, super tackle Dorsch. made by the kicker. Boy, Travis Dorsch came right in there. It, it looked like the same hole, the same return they had last week against Nebraska for two big plays. You're going to see a big old crease here. Everything sealed inside here. Watch this. And then the kicker. I tell you, that's a, a pretty athletic kicker. Travis Dorsch, to me, yeah, he, he knew it. Oh. Missed opportunity. Missed opportunity. Travis, a great athlete. He led the state in rebounding of Montana. 
in basketball as a junior and senior was the baseball team's MVP, won a state championship in basketball, and you saw his athleticism. He did not look like a kicker yeah, like making a that play. Yeah, like a real football player. 6'6", 216. That's a yeah. nice shot at the kickers, huh? <laughs> Absolutely. A little crease there for Julius Jones. Adell on the stop. On the tackle. That, that's what they six. need more of. You know, Craig, this is what Notre Dame needs a little bit more of. Jordan Black over here kind of knocking his guy out. Jones kind of sealing his guy in. You give him a little crease. Good tackle there by uh, Adell. But, you know, they need a lot more of that out of the running game. He looks like he's limping just a little bit. Second and four at the 28. High formation, Lopinski. And Tony Fisher gets a hand off up near the 35-yard line. John Phillips made the stop. That should be a first down for Notre Dame. We go Tom Lipinski, the fullback, leading the way. 235 pounds of fullback. Tony Fisher smart enough to realize, hey, follow that. Uh, yeah, good lead block on 47 Johnson, the inside linebacker. Hey, Tony Fisher's an unselfish guy. He had started 12 straight games until last week. Julius Jones was inserted in the starter. Didn't hear a word out of Tony Fisher. Didn't complain at all. First and ten. Only the fourth first down for Notre Dame in the game. That's an offside. Right tackle looked like he jumped. Tony Fisher has lost the 35, 37-yard line. Mitrione again, number 98. You mentioned it earlier, Craig. Mitrione, number 98 for the Boilermakers. Good player, but he guesses a lot on the snap count. And they're going to take him right out of the ball game. Yep. They take him out. Mitrione uh, kind of guesses some. He's a little bit of a freelancer. And you can... Offside, defense. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Still first down. And, and, and you know, you can use your count here. In, in a hard count. You get it, because he does guess some. Fifteen tackles for losses last year when he guessed, guessed right. Some coaches use the word cheat <laughs> a little bit on that line. And you know, if you get the edge and you don't get called, it could be the difference in the backfield. That's how they got it. Clearly offside, first and five. Fisher squeaking free, 40, up near the 45. He was a little shy of first down yardage. Gain of four. 13-28 here in the third quarter. Certainly looks like at halftime, Bob Davey went in and told his team, hey, offensive linemen, you guys have got to be a lot more productive. We can't ask uh, our new quarterback, Godsey, to do it all. Special teams done their job. Defense is doing their job. Hey, everybody else around the quarterback, let's do let's do something right. Second down and one. Twins either side. They give it to the fullback. And Lipinski has stopped, I believe, shy of first down. You know, Sean Phillips, Warren Moore on the stop for the Boilermakers of Purdue. I'll tell you, even though this defense is small, boy, they are quick. They are really quick. Warren Moore, nicknamed Ike. Rock Spack, the defensive coordinator. Brock and all Big Ten linebacker. They did give them the first down. Just got to the 45-yard line. Spack was a three-year starter here at Purdue. Pretty good player. And Drew Brees said it earlier in the week. He does not like Notre Dame. In fact, he said coach hates Notre Dame. And he was looking at the tape practically moments after their win last week. Fisher for a few yards. And Pat, that brings up a good point too in the preparation time where Notre Dame had to worry about AM and Nebraska. Purdue's had a couple of easier matchups with Kent State and Central Michigan. And Johnson on the tackle. Absolutely. But, uh, you know, Notre Dame's been preparing for since spring practice for Purdue. And Landon Johnson, number 47, red shirt freshman, one of those young players. Rex Brock said about him, you know, he's one of those wow athletes. You watch him and say, wow, this guy is going to be a terrific player. Big upside. Second and nine, five plays in the drive. All rushes so far for Notre Dame. Play action. Lepinski, the fullback, grabbed it off the shoelaces. Nice catch at the 50, fell down around the 48-yard line. Not nice catch, but if had that ball been thrown where he didn't have to slow down for it, maybe he catches that and certainly runs for a first down, maybe more. Now, I think Gatsu was expecting him to run a little bit more into the flat. And Lipinski ran upfield a little bit. But in college football, pro football, the fullback, I swear, Craig, is always open if you're patient enough to throw the ball in the fullback. Big down here, though, for Notre Dame, third and three. Just across midfield. Fisher, the single setback. Gibbons in motion to the left. Another play action throwing. He's got Gibbons complete at the 45. First down inside the 40. 
Nice movement by David Gibbons, a 6'3", 214-pound junior from Humble, Texas. Gary Gotze used all 6'7", of his height to get this ball over the de defense. See those guys jumping? I, I think if he was 6'5", the ball would have been knocked down. But David Gibbons, uh, little line, little uh, running back, little wide receiver, looks like a linebacker. He is a strong guy that they keep, Notre Dame keep expecting David Gibbons to have one of those breakout kind of games. A design play for the design major, the talented guy in art who is telling us forever about a table he keeps <laughs> working on and building. And uh, back to Fisher for a yard or so, met right by Gilbert Gardner and Chris Clopton. But Gibbons was telling us about this table, and Brock Williams, his roommate, said that table is never going to get done. Well, yeah, we, we started in his class in summer school. He was working on this table for uh, weeks, no and weeks and weeks and weeks. He keeps saying it's going to be ready next week, it's going to be ready next week, it's going to be ready. Still not ready. Lots well, of design houses and furniture. After what he hopes will be an NFL career. A junior grew up in the Houston area. Second and 10 at the 37. Godsey looks like he's getting more and more comfortable. Most complete again for the tight end O'Leary. And Notre Dame taking a little page out of the Purdue short passing game. Going to tackle there by Chris Clopton, the second uh, play in a row that Chris has come up, made a good play. Nice cushion. See his head in there. He's looking. As soon as he sees the quarterback turn, he drives. Again, you know, that's a really good tackle by Chris Clopton. Now, the Notre Dame people were saying all week, hey, Clopton's a little smallish for a corner. We want to throw some jump balls to his side. But Chris Clopton gets tested every week, and he seems to respond pretty well up here again. Five straight completions for Gatsi. Recruited again as a tight end here. A year ago, he was wearing a big number. Fisher up across the 28. First down again for Notre Dame. And one of their most impressive drives of the game. I think about Gatsi, you're talking about him playing some tight end. In the high school, he's, you know, he played some center. As a matter of fact, the sophomore year, he was a center when his brother, George, was the quarterback. Look at that hole. Yeah. Different offensive line play, this opening drive in the second half when we saw the first half. There weren't any holes there in the first half. First and 10, the Irish. First and 10 at the 25. Lipinski and Fisher in the I formation. Gibbons is out wide right. Tight ends both sides of the line. And that time Purdue jumping up on Tony Fisher. Ralph Turner stepped up to make the stop. The strong safety blitz. Again, when your team keeps running the ball on you successfully, you try to bring that eighth guy up close to the line of scrimmage. Ralph Turner is that guy. He's the strong safety. No gain. Number eight. He's going to come right back here. Can't block him. Again, the counter to that, obviously, is the little play action fake to try to throw a post route or a corner route. No gain, second and ten. Again, tight ends on either side of the line. Lone receivers, Gibbons. Gotsy looking at Gibbons, eluding the tackle, gets it to Gibbons at the 22. He just managed to catch it. Aiken Adel is trying to pick it up, but Gotsy did a good job to get a completion and a bit of a dangerous pass. However, it's short of first it's down, down yardage. Well, you know, uh, Gary Gotsy does a pretty good job of his footwork there. 6'7, 235 pounds, but he's nimble enough just to kind of avoid the rush. See number 13, Adele there. I, I still believe Adele's a better pass rusher than he is an outside linebacker. They moved him he's right here. They moved him from defensive end where he had 11 sacks a year ago to outside linebacker. They didn't want to do it. They're just so thin at linebacker. They felt that uh, Sean Phillips could do the job at right end. And Adele's such a good athlete, could play linebacker, though he's a little bit small. Mm. Going over the head of Jamin Hunter there on the third down and seven. And now another long field goal chance for Nick Seta and Notre Dame. You know, both teams have kickers, you mentioned Dorsch, that are pretty athletic. We mentioned last week Seta, 6'10", high jumper in high school, great long distance uh, track guy as well, pretty athletic. This one will be a 39-yard attempt. Seta hit the 47-yarder. He's third, he's three for three in his career. In his first year as the kicker. Seta's kick, no good. He pulled this one to the left. So Notre Dame moved it down, but Nick Senna going wide left, the first miss of his collegiate career, and it stays a three-point game. Got good placement, he just seemed to hook it to the left. And a good opening drive by the Irish, wasted. No points on the board, but boy, 
They sure did adjust well and came back and ran the ball a lot better. Moved the ball well, that 55-yard drive, but no points. Notre Dame by three. And our thanks to the folks at Goodyear for today's overhead shots. And off to the right side, Brown. Running past the 20, squeaking free past the 30 up to the 35. How about Lance Legree? Stop. Yeah, how about the hustle, Lance Legree? Now, that was the pop that Joe Tiller was trying to get in the first half of the running game. But if you don't have your defensive tackle, Lance Legree, 285, 80 pounds hustling, you don't have a play. I think he's way over here. That, that is one hustle. Otherwise, he scores. Cedric Brown. So you, you never know on a hustle play if you're going to be the last guy, the last shot. And Lance Legree, when you watch that tape tomorrow, the Notre Dame team is a safe touch. 290 pound nose guard showing some good legs. First and 10 at the 36. Reese on the give, and he hides it well right through, doesn't he? Pick up of about four Harrison and Driver Harrison making the stop round, picking up a few yards in the play. From high above these pictures, courtesy of the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company for more than 75 years, Goodyear has been providing aerial coverage at the yeah, world's one. major sporting events. Still, only 12 passes by Drew Brees wow. in this game. You know, he averages 45. Averages 28 completions and two and a half touchdown passes per game. Nowhere near that thus far this game. Second and eight. Trips to the right. Now Sutherland in motion to the left. He's looking that way. Now tossing. Complete. As a man in A.T. Simpson. The flag is down in the backfield. Beckstrom on the stop. A.T. Simpson. Go down to Bob Wischusen. All right, guys, Thanks, thanks very much. I'm standing by here with Grant Irons, who has been nothing but a screamer all day on the sidelines. Is that the only way you can let out your aggressions? I just want to go out there and help my teammates some way, somehow. You know, it's, it's difficult that I can't, you know, go out there and play by example on the field, but I can lead by example through, through emotions and through encouragement, encouragement, and that's what I'm going to do through today. Have you been surprised and have the defensive guys been surprised so far with how infrequently Drew Brees has thrown the football? But you know, we prepare, you know, every all, all week we prepare for Drew Brees and the Purdue offense. And I think things are going well for us. And we're going to continue to keep playing as one one unit and as a defense. All right, Grant, thanks very much. Grant Irons out with that separated shoulder, guys. Back upstairs to you. Yeah, one of the captains of the team. Still pretty excited, huh? <laughs> That's why he's a good player. He's got that coach speak down now that he's got a coach on the sideline. There's a holding penalty. Second and 18 for the 28. Five wide now. Empty set for Purdue. Looks at Stratton. Comes back near side. Sutherland incomplete. Beckstrom again. The sophomore has been involved a lot. A guy who hasn't played much in the first few games. Had a shoulder injury in camp. Jason Beckstrom has had a strong game. Well, you, you know, th this offense forces you to play nickel dime. And by definition, those nickel and dime backs are not starters. So, you know, they're... Again, you get one, two, three, he has a four, five here. They do a pretty good job of coverage. Again, it was an audible by Breeze. So Tony Driver steps out. He kind of counter audibleizes. They go from man to zone. Breeze was expecting a man for man coverage. He got zone. Third and long now. Third and 18 yards. He's only two for six on third down. Tight end comes back to the line in Stratton. Twins either side. Breeze. Sets in some pressure. They got him in the backfield. Ryan Roberts, who's been filling in for the injured. All right, defense coming through again here, Shane. Ryan Roberts with a huge sack on third and 18 to bring up a fourth and 23. Yeah, this is, again, remember I told you, if you, if you watch closely, um, we have about 10 guys within three yards of the line of scrimmage. And so what we were doing, we were either all out blitzing them or we were dropping out in the cover three. Um, and at this point, we had, we had gotten to him a couple times. Uh, even when we didn't sack him, we were knocking him on his butt. And so he was kind of trigger happy back there a little bit. And so in this particular play, we showed all out blitz and, and we ended up dropping out to a cover three. Um, just kind of confusing. You could see he was confused. The routes changed against man um, and we were in zone. And so they, they were they were on the same page. And that, that was, you know, the whole scheme of the defense was to not let these guys be comfortable and just have them be confused. Everybody in the stadium, I think, was shocked that they chose to run the trick play and throw the ball here. Were you surprised when he threw the ball? Because it looked like Sutherland was surprised. Yeah, you know, I, I, watching this again, I don't know that it was a it was a called trick play. 
what we did, we, we brought a guy off the slot um, to try to go block the punt. And my job was to, was to pop out and, and cover the uncovered man. And uh, I, I don't even really think he was running a route. I think that the punter just saw that the slot blitz and thought that he had the guy open, uh, not knowing that we disguised it. Were you surprised Southern never looked back? And should the release guy always be looking back? Because he's also going down the field to make the tackle. So, I mean, tough situation yeah. for Virginia Southern. It is difficult. You know, I, I don't know for them if this was tagged um, and, and the slot didn't get the tag or the check. Um, but it, or, or if it was the punter just doing something, just trying to make a play. Um, but it, it obviously didn't work. Um, and uh, it, it was beneficial for our offense again. Well, it will lead, as we take one more look at the fake punt, it will lead to a next set of field goal to give Notre Dame a 2014 lead. And in this game, every point was critical. So we're going to rejoin you again coming up in the fourth quarter. Notre Dame leading Purdue 17-14 in Fighting Irish Football returns to NBC in three weeks. A start tailback Julius Jones and Notre Dame take on one of the nation's leading wide receivers in Durrani Pitts and Stanford, the Cardinal winning last year's game, Notre Dame and Stanford, Saturday, October 7th, right here on NBC. Good to try to Joe Taylor, still surprised at the call. You know, that's one of those calls, fake punt, maybe do at the 50-yard line, but not inside your own 25 in a close ball game. Certainly courageous, and I think it does point a bit to their feeling that they've been able to stop the Notre Dame attack, but they did come off the good drive last time. 50-plus yards, Jones in the carry for a couple. And now if you brought back the defensive coordinator and said, hey, guys, you know, it's one of those sudden change kind of things. You have to you have to respond. I'm sure he's getting his defensive guys ready to kind of at least force a field goal attempt. Don't give up anything easy, and they sure don't. Looking like Chris Klopp, the number 23, was getting held there. The, the corner who's played pretty good, well, particularly in the run game. Second down and eight yards. Lipinski slotted to the right, Gibbons in motion. Whoops, again. And that's that's Mitrione again. We'll see how the call goes. That's Mitrione there. And, yeah, they're, 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 they're not an easy call for these guys. Mm. Big Ten officials. Jim Lapatina, the uh, Referee here. Prior to the snap, dead ball, offside, defense, five yard penalty, still second now. It's against Purdue, he's second and three. Tiller and Davey are in another good battle, and this has become a great rivalry. Box, that's Mitrione. Yeah, that's Botts. Excuse me, Matt Mitrione. That was Brett Botts. And Matt's parents. All right, formation. Godsey will hand off to Jones. Not a little room. Right near the first down. Good lead block by Tom Lipinski. You know, the, the fullback position for Notre Dame, they really haven't gotten a lot of running production out of it. He's been kind of a pretty good receiver, but today Tom no, no, Lipinski, a couple of good lead blocks, and that was one of them right there. Officials calling for time. Let's see if they measure here. On what will be either third and one or first down, but it is very close. Yeah, grass is wow, that's close. It is a first down. The grass is awfully long, too. You know that? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that. Uh, those one, Joey Getherall got lost in the grass. That's right. In the first quarter. <laughs> How about Gary Godsey, Pat? First start, pretty composed overall. He's composed. I, th I just think he needs some more help. And the, you know, the yeah. opening drive, the second half, the offensive line really kind of did their part. They got that running game going. But he needs some plays from his other guys. First down and 10. Jones and Lipinski. Again, eye formation. Gibbons moves to the right. And out to Jones. Eluding right at the line. He just got... With a Mitrio, but Phillips came up to make the stop gain of a couple. You're right, Mitrio, number 98, really is a piercing, penetrating kind of guy. 
15 tackles for losses a year ago. And, you know, he's a big body at 285 pounds, but kind of just, you know, goes sideways and stunts and slants. And he can create a lot of negative plays. It really slowed down Julius Jones before he really had a chance to get going. Yeah, see, he's looking at his wristband. All the defensive players at Purdue wear wristbands, including defensive linemen. A little unusual. Second down and 10. They got actually did not get any yardage. Jones. Oh, man. Oh, he's met Good. and driven back again at Purdue D. There goes Landon Johnson again. 47. Two. Man. Now, Landon Johnson, you see why Brock Sprack is so excited about Landon Johnson, 47. He's over here. That's Klopp. Here's 47 there. It's Klopp first, takes on the fullback, steers it inside. Landon Johnson's got to blows through two blockers to make a great stop. Third and ten. That's a really big stop by Landon Johnson. A good play by Chris Klopp. Irish put three wideouts in. O'Leary is the tight end. It's third and ten. They can get a first down. They'll have to get to the two. Jones is next to Gotsi, drops back, throwing in the screen. Oh, great play on Julius Jones by Mitrio. Boy, oh boy, yeah, he's smart. He thought he was he pointing to his helmet. Yeah, I remember that. That's two screen plays Matt Mitrione has shut down. He's right here. See, he sees those offensive linemen, he feels them. There he goes. I mean, that is a smart football play by Matt Mitrione. And Joe Tiller knows it. Yep, he took, yeah. took care of the sophomore center, Jeff Fain, in the play. Mitrione was second in a tough man competition in kickboxing back cool. home. Tough guy. Set it now, missed his last one. And he's good here from 32. Defense did their job. After that special teams play, that decision, defense did a good job. Joe Tiller knows it. However, the move backfired for Purdue because it cost three points, and the lead now extended to six for Bob Davey and the Fighting Irish late in the third quarter. Notre Dame 20 and Purdue 14 at Notre Dame Stadium. Back in a moment. The Irish leading by six points, 2.17 to go in the third quarter, taking advantage of the fake getting three points, although, of course, Bob Davey, when you get it at the 22, you want to punch it in for seven. Wake up the echoes, the mystique of the fans here at Notre Dame. There's some talk this week. It's become a great rivalry, of course, over the years it's developed. But the Irish have dominated 46 times winning, losing 23 times a couple. Purdue's won two of the last three, however. And they're looking for their first win here since 1974 when they won 31-20. Sutherland, oh, he can't elude the coverage. Donald Dykes got him. Good job. They'll take over at about the 16. You look at the rivalries. Purdue, now this is the 72nd game, the Navy Series. They've played consecutively since 1927. USC also a favorite against Notre Dame. Well, you know, two minutes left here in the third quarter, and Purdue's quarterback, Drew Brees, has thrown as many passes as his punter. <laughs> one. They've each thrown yeah. one in the second half. Godsey, how about this, has thrown one more than Drew Brees. Who would have expected that uh, late I in the third quarter? I can't believe he's only thrown 13 balls. Brees to try to tie up Godsey, but instead the Irish tie up Brees. And it was Anthony Weaver who comes off a strong performance a week ago that got him near the 10-yard line. Uh, again, you're seeing something really unusual. That's now the second sack of Brees. You know, only had one coming into today's ball game. Only 15 of all, la all last year. Really good defensive line, push up the front. And then uh, really, number 39, Anthony Denman forced Brees to step up into the, into the tackles. A loss of five of the play, second and 15. Purdue breaking out quickly. Second and 15 from their own 11. The inside, oh, Brees still has it. Now throwing as Sutherland complete. Good oh, play by Drew Brees. That should be a first down about the 28-yard line. Shane Walton in the coverage. Good fake in the handoff. A good fake in the handoff. Nice call. Hey, you have some trouble protecting your quarterback. Get him outside. He's a pretty mobile guy. You fake that inside draw, which you ran successfully earlier. He cut block. And then real disciplined route by Vinny Sutherland. Nice, uh, nice dancing. She's good at uh, 
good for Ryan Roberts. Had, a, had one of the sacks early in the game. A little surprised to get Ryan back. He had disc removed in the offseason. Somehow he's back quickly, unfortunately, for Notre Dame with irons out. Low on the handoff. Not much around the right tackle. Weaver again. A bit plugged. 276 junior from Saratoga Springs making the stop. Well, Drew Brees finished fourth in the Heisman Trophy voting a year ago. Uh, clearly is considered and should be considered one of the top candidates this year, but this is what you expect Heisman Trophy candidates to shine. This is the time of the game you, you do. 50 seconds remain in the third quarter. His team is trailing by six, and you're at Notre Dame Stadium. Seven for 14, 137 yards. Second and seven. Who's running an option, pitching. There's a low, and he, oh. the Irish said, you know what, we're pretty good against that option attack, and Denman and Williams you know, make the stop. Brock Williams has really played well. I mean, think about what he did. He came into this game thinking, hey, I've got to defend 45 passes. Well, he's only seen 14 thus far, but he's made some pretty good stops on a lot of runs, which he didn't anticipate doing. Probably had the light shoulder pads on today, expecting all the passes. He should have the heavies. <laughs> That's right. They do may not get a playoff here. They're going to let the clock wind down to end this third quarter. So the fans enjoying this one. It's been a good contest between the in-state rivals. And after three quarters, the 21st-ranked Irish lead the 13th-ranked Boilermakers 20 to 14. We'll be right back after these words from your local station. Craig Benavini with Pat Hayden and some yeah. fans who are ready. He had all the team colors there. I'll tell you, that's something Norman Rockwell did not do. <laughs> so he got in way of one of those managers spraying the helmets before the game. Great college football Saturday, Pat, here in yeah. South Bend. As usual, touchdown Jesus overlooking the stadium. Before they renovated it, you could actually see it from the stadium. It's one of the things Tim Stratton, the tight end, was talking about that he noticed when he entered the field for Purdue a couple of years back here. Big play here, third and six. They are four for nine on third down. Shotgun Breeze. Breeze, plenty of time. Going to try and take off. They caught up to him, LeBree. And Boyman from the... This is the fourth quarter, Shane, and that is a key stop by Rocky Boyman. Stopping Breeze short of a first down. That forced a Purdue punt. Notre Dame certainly needed the football at this point in the game. Boyman had a, a really good game. Six tackles. He forced a fumble. And the NBC crew talked at one point about he went to defensive coordinator Greg Madison and said, I want to be in the whole game. And Greg said, well, wait a second. You're a starter. He goes, no, no. I want to be in nickel. I want to be in dime. He never wanted to come off the field. What kind of teammate was he? Man, Rock was a beast. Um, you, one thing about Rocky is anytime you saw him, you knew he was going to be working out or just coming from a workout. That guy was a, a nonstop workaholic um and, and he brought it he had the same mentality as our defense and we just believed that no one could stop us um and that was rocky for you rocky would give everything he had uh i remember in the nebraska game uh the year before he had made this huge hit on the goal line and his hand is just swollen and it's just every time his heart would beat there's blood is just squirting out and i'm like rock you gotta get off and he's like no 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 and he's trying to hide it from, from the ref so he doesn't get, have to get out. And that's just, that's who Rocky was. Rocky was a, he was a team guy. He, he, loved, he loved the game and he loved his teammates and he gave everything he had. So we'll be back to join you on Notre Dame's final drive of the game in just a bit. At the 20, and he mm. ran right at the land of Justin, yeah. the lady hit the flag yeah. recovery. That's one of those stupid penalties. You know, as a defender, it looks like he's hurt, too. Man, yeah, it looks like he's hurt. Boy, he is, he's down. And they have a true freshman behind him, Matt Lavecchio. He bounces up. It's good to see. Shaking okay. his eyes, but he did get up. Yeah, his father agrees with the uh, call. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you just know as a defender, they're going to treat quarterbacks differently. If this is a, you know, a running back or a wide receiver, generally they're not going to oh, call it. that ball. Personal foul on a defense, late hit. When you go to the head. Penalty from the end of run, automatic. 
first down. It's Craig Terrell, number 92. Particularly when you go to the head late to a quarterback, you're just going to call it every single time. Well, it's only 15 yards, and it and really should be more a hit like that, but that's the rules. And you know Purdue wants to get physical, but that's ridiculous. First and 10 at the 35. Gotsi will hand off. Jones met right at the line of scrimmage. Brady Doe stepped up. We heard from a lot of guys talking this week with Purdue, especially because of their size, that they were concerned about being physical, and they know they're overmatched physically, and Brock's back wants his guys to hit. Oh boy, they've done a phenomenal job, really, of stopping the run. Let's go down to Bob. Guys downstairs, injury report from the Purdue sideline. Strong safety Ralph Turner on the sideline right now. He jammed his ankle during the last series, went back into the locker room, they taped him up. He has yet to re-enter the game, but of course, Pat, as you've been noting, he really is key to what they do up front. They've been sending the safety after the Notre Dame line all afternoon, so we have to see if he gets back in the game. Back Got up to you. On the play action, thank you, Bob. It's nearly picked off and incomplete. And you know, Woodyard nearly had it. You're replacing uh, Ralph Turner's true freshman, Stuart Swigert whom they think is going to be a phenomenal player at, uh, he's right in here as a matter of fact, phenomenal player at Purdue. And one of those plays that you kind of hold your breath at the head coach, kind of in the crowd. Ashante Woodger, number seven, he is a good cover corner. I almost had one early in the first quarter, remember, that yeah. Joey Getherall knocked away from him. There he is. Really good cover, one-on-one -on -one guy. Irish looking at just 30% on third down. There's a long one, third and ten. Gotsy play action. Lofting one. He has an open receiver, but it floats up there. And again, it's nearly picked off. Stuart yeah. Schweiger really should have gotten that one on the floater intended for David Hunter. But the Irish will have to punt. True freshman, Stuart Schweiger. He's the guy that just came in for Ralph Turner that Bob was just talking about. He's right here. See him read? He sees, he sees, then he drives. There was a float. I wasn't sure it was a pass or a punt. But uh, yeah, you're right. A ball that he probably could have caught. Just, he's up here and here. I think, I think he ran right into his uh, own man, Woodyard. Otherwise, he picks that one off easily. Right through his hands. A break for the Irish. Big time athlete, a fast guy. Did not play much defensive back, however, in high school. Sutherland's going to let it go. Takes an Irish bounce right at the 25-yard line. And again, no return. A 40-yard punt. Just shy of the 25 yard line. That's where Purdue, so Purdue will take over, over at 10. the 24. 12.55 remaining in regulation. Notre Dame leads 20 to 14. Picture perfect day in South Bend, Indiana. Had a good battle of rivals separated by only a couple of hours. Purdue from Lafayette, Indiana. Notre Dame from beautiful South Bend leading by six. Drew Brees. Heisman hopeful has not had the big number day. Had a touchdown earlier. Interception as well. He hasn't thrown it as much as he normally does. On the draw, he keeps. And look at him move up to the 40-yard line. Driver knocks him down at the 42. Good move by Drew Brees as he got around Terry Harrison, the linebacker for Notre Dame, gain of 17. You know, empty back. Empty backfield, nobody, you know, there, but you have to worry about those five spread receivers. See, he's the only back right here, all these receivers here. Once you get through, again, this is what they're trying to do earlier with the regular, you know, backs, because you got the man-for-man -man coverage. All the defensive backs have their back turned to you, and you have yeah. a chance for a big run. Get low to sleep with his arm, 42 yards rushing, 181 last year, and he had two touchdowns against Wisconsin in one game. So concerned with that big right arm. He's going downtown here. Southern has a step, oh and it's oh incomplete. Oh Both of the receivers had a step, and you see Drew Brees' reaction afterward. He would like that pass back. Brock Williams on the coverage. Vinny Sutherland against Brock Williams. Again, right here, whoops, right here, excuse me, right there in the upper slot, if you will. He gets by him, didn't get a good enough jam on him. You know, he throws the ball inside, it's a touch. Sutherland's got excellent speed, and Drew Brees knew he had a touchdown that got away from him. Not many do. 39 touchdowns his sophomore year, 25 last year in just 12 games. He cut down on his interceptions, did not throw the bomb as much last year. Second and 10, over the middle. Oh boy. Complete. Was Pete that Dawson makes the catch wide open. Tony Driver on the stop, gain of 12. 
Was that a gun? I, I thought that was supposed to be that old bubble screen that Purdue usually run, and then he, that wasn't there. Checks off that and drills the ball. I mean, Drew Brees throws, has a strong arm, and he can you know line it when he has to, as he did right there. Wow. Dawson, the fifth receiver, in on a Drew Brees connection today. You know, John Stanford has not caught a pass. He was their leading receiver coming in. Freshman number 82, great hands. First and 10, and he's going to go on the draw again. Flag called as he was taken down by Denman at the 40. Yeah, the old umpire got that one. That's usually the, the holding area. Indeed, that's what they're going to call. Bring that one back. Good call, though. Good call by Joe Tiller. I mean, until a team stops it, I, I just keep running it. Spread people out. Run Drew Brees. Joe Tiller taking notes. Holding on the offense. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Still first down. Well, looked like it was on the left side of that offensive line. This is, uh, there's Kowski there. That's uh, number 79, Gene Murskowski. Oh yeah, he's doing the dance there. The Heimlich maneuver, boom, takes him down. That's, uh, that's a fair holding call. You know, he's a strong guy. Bruskowski, 6'2", 3'11". The guy next to him, Corby, the same thing. Corby, the center, squats 800 pounds just about. Very close to that. Like 27 points in Scrabble if you get Bruskowski's name. <laughs> First and 22 now. Complete to the tight end, Stratton. Oh, Good receiver soft. across the 45. Soft hands. That Israel is on the coverage. Yep. Big guy, Tim Stratton, 252 pounds. The very first time he ever saw Purdue play, he was being recruited by Notre Dame in this stadium. But boy, real soft hands. Big guy, 252 pounds. You know, disciplined route. Gathers in, but pretty good after the catch as a tight end. All big 10 tight end a year ago. The tip was telling us, Matt, that he, he was just too big for Little League football. He grew from 5'4", 135 in sixth grade to 5'10", 170 in seventh grade. They took it up again to high school. Second and eight. Third, third call. Third quarterback draw. And Breeze is stopped that time by Legree, who's had a big game up front for Notre Dame. And B.J. Scott in there as well, number 93. And Greg Madison loves him. Loves the way his defensive line. Like that. The first three games this year, Greg Madison has to be really happy with his defensive line because they're playing a lot better than they did a year ago. Look at Legree get the crowd going here. This, this is an important down. 11 minutes remaining in the ball game. Different looking crowd in color than a week ago where there was a lot of red that annoyed a lot of Notre Dame people from the athletic director, Kevin White, all the way down. And despite Purdue being very close, it is certainly a major Irish home crowd today. He's got one-on-one -on -one again, Southern and Williams. Trip oh, to the left, lost God. the snap. Bree's going to go after it and fall on it as Boyman jumps on him around the 35. And Purdue oh, will have to punt. Unbelievable. Usually with crowd noise, Craig, you have that silent count. You know, you go up, the quarterback lifts his foot up, and he tells the center, hey, now I'm ready for it. A Kobe, I think, it never even looked back, never saw him. But Brees wasn't even close to being ready to accept that ball. Brees just did a great job of making sure the uh, the Irish didn't recover it. Well, that's uh, an unusual play. Block punt, interception first half, the fake that didn't work out for Purdue, and then the missed snap. A series of plays that have caused Purdue throughout the game, and really a large reason why Notre Dame is leading 20 to 14. Oh, they nearly got that. Howard nearly got it on a bomb by Dorsch. And Gatherall calls for the fair catch, backpedaling at the 10 to rip the punt of 51 yards with no return by Travis Dorsch. How did Howard miss that one? Notre Dame going for their second block, and they nearly got it. 9.57 remaining in the fourth. Oh, they haven't forgotten this one around the state of Indiana. Notre Dame Purdue a year ago. Fighting Irish traveling to West Lafayette to play the Boilermakers. 70,000 on hand. Drew Brees and Ariel Shell threw for 317 and a touchdown. Still, the Boilermakers trail by one after three. However, this 42 yard bomb late in the game led to a field goal. Purdue by five. Then, no, oh, this one's killed the Irish. Still, they botched the clock. Then, on a third down play, Jarius Jackson is sacked, and they cannot get another playoff because they had to call a timeout. It's stuck in the craw to this day of the Fighting Irish as you look at Drew Brees 
And Kevin Rogers still to this day calls it the most devastating loss of his career, even more so than last week. Overtime to number one Nebraska. Today, though, it's Purdue on the miscue so far, but they're still very much in it. Of course, first and ten. Gotsy getting away, throwing downtown. Has Gibbons! He's got it! Uh, well, I would say that's a gutsy call and pretty good wow. execution. I mean, your quarterback is struggling all day. That's Ralph Turner already went out once. And yeah, Mr. Gutsy is very, very happy about his son. Uh, good elusiveness. I mean, 6'7", 235 pounds. Watch him avoid the rush. A clean shot by Mitrion had him. Then he takes a shot. The arm strength to be able to get the ball out there, even though he's going to get shot. I mean, he couldn't follow through. So you see some pretty good arm strength by Godson. And there's that first big play by David Gibbons for the Irish this season, the one they've been hoping for for the last three weeks. Gutsy call by Kevin Rogers, good execution by Gary Gutsy and David Gibbons. Pat, if there's a play to find Gutsy so far, even more so than the run, I think it's that yeah, one right absolutely. there. He avoided the rush and two guys in front. He yeah. stood through a bomb to Gibbons. Play action, he's trying to fake and get his man Getherall going deep, but the Irish not on the same page in that play. Okay, I think what Gary Gatsy has to be careful, he's up by, you know, six points. So you want to at least get yourself a field goal. So Gary Gatsy is kind of growing in confidence, you know? Oh. You know, he gets knocked down, but he's just going to get up and just kind of tell these guys, hey, is that your best shot? You know, bring it on, I'm ready for it. Yeah, he's ready. Yeah, he's ready. <laughs> oh, man. But I'm telling you, Gary Gatsy has to be aware of the situation. Up by six, you're trying to get yourself at least a field goal, make it a two-score game. Option, Gatsy <laughs> at the 40-yard line, Stuart Schweigert in the stop. We talked to the Gatsy, coaches of Purdue this week, the and they were prepared coming in for an option attack along with Gatsy because they felt the Irish coaches, you look at Brock's back, have invested two years of the option, and we haven't really seen much of it. Yeah, that, that was the first play, and he looked yeah. like he uh, you know, had Boxer Bunch up running with that thing. It just didn't look quite natural to him. Talk about some of the frustration we talked about earlier from the coaching staff of Purdue. Now they had to really worry about two different styles this week yep. instead of just concentrating on Arnaz Battle and that attack. And they need about, uh, you know, eight yards or so at least, you know, ten yards of the first down, but eight yards made for a reasonable field goal attempt, er, attempt Craig, I think. Yeah, even eight is a 50-yarder. Yeah. Godsey, the pro set. Strong, oh, oh. over the middle, it's over the head, Incom it's intercepted as he was looking for Hunter, picked up by Schweiger. Schweiger, an error by Gary Godsey puts Purdue in business. Nine months ago, Stuart Schweiger was a high school player. Great high school track star. Brock Sprack says, hey, then he's right here. Watch him read. Really was an option quarterback. Sees it, again, ball thrown high. Really the kind of passes that Drew Brees throw in the fourth quarter two years ago that Tony Driver intercepted. But boy, I tell you, this Purdue defense has played really well. Ten freshmen, the two deeps. Stuart Schweiger, a true freshman. He was uh, started out today's game as the nickelback, but with the injury to Ralph Turner, is now starting. Battling his own injury, too. He had a broken thumb in two days. The Irish actually recruited Schweiger. I think there may be a white out here. Now, had he not completed the pass anyway, Notre Dame would have punted. But uh, they certainly were thinking about putting some more points on the board and moving in. Breeze, see if he could take advantage. Throws, was it complete? Yeah. Iris say no. I think he got it. Yep, Sapir will be giving him the catch. Pass is complete. Morales was diving for seven. And yes, they're going to give him the catch. Jefferson on the coverage. Good, good catch by Seth Morales. Joe Tiller was saying, hey, I'm a little worried how Seth is going to perform today. He's never played on this big a stage. But boy, he's made a couple of nice catches today. That, that was a really key one. When you throw the ball low, it doesn't get picked off generally. You may have an a, incompletion, but not an interception with a low throw. Second and three from the 30. Empty set. Trips to the left. To and several in motion. May throw it. He's going to throw it. Looking for his receivers. Got he's it, out. man. Oh, yeah, Stanford may have had his foot out of bounds. Yep, he was. He also, I think he may have pushed off. Did he catch it in bounds no, first? No, no. His foot was out. His right foot was out. Now, Stanford, we said, we mentioned. Leading receiver. There, right? Yep, the left foot out. out. Yep. When he got the ball, his foot was on the line. 
comes to hand. Left foot out, no doubt about it. If he could have went right left, he was yeah, okay. Right, right, left, right. Well, Vinny Sutherford a year ago threw a touchdown pass to Drew Brees against Ohio State. Well, again, in the situation, there was second and three. Now it's a big third and three, and the clock becoming a factor, 7.52. They better spy him on the quarterback draw. Five wide, looking left. He's got three to the right. Plenty of time. Over the middle, Stratton. First down, the tight end. Getting free of Ron Israel. And a nice play on third down for the tight end. Stratton is having a good day. Uh, you know, what, what, a, uh, what a target and what a, an asset to have in your team, a tight end with, with hands like Tim Stratton. And Drew Brees think, was trying to get this ball downfield. Even though it was third and four, he was looking up top. Probably his fourth choice. And, and look at him. Look at the way he just kind of bounces off the strong safety. That's not just a linebacker. Right? Tim Stratton bounces off a pretty good strong safety in Ron Israel. Tim, who admittedly says, I am not a huge fan of practice. <laughs> Always is giving the coaches a hard time. But, man, he's a huge fan of game day for Purdue Boilermakers. First and ten. Here he is again, Stratton. And Driver had to do all he could to pull him down across midfield and near the 43, a gain of 13. That was a strength throw by Drew Brees. Notre Dame changes it up to Blitz, throws off his back foot. Blitz is coming here on the outside. Dang it. Takes him outside, Stratton does it, and then cut back inside. And really, Drew Brees does a great job of getting rid of this ball. Here comes the outside Blitz, the defensive lineman. The linebacker's coming as well, throws it over, but has arm strength enough to get it to his big targeted tight end. Oh, that's a good throw. First and 10 out at the 43. Again, trips to the left. Stanford in motion, gets the ball, nearly lost it. The freshman running inside the 40 near the 35 yard line. Donald Dykes on the stop. Some trickery from offensive coordinator Jim Cheney. You know, I'm not so sure. They, 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 that's kind of a regular basic play for them. Most teams, you yep. say, you know, it's kind of a trick play, but they, we've seen them what, run that three times today. The pass, I guess, was kind of a trick play, but it's kind of a basic part of their offense, run that uh, reverse to a wide receiver. And once they pass it, too, Pat, you just never know. Yeah, then you yeah, start getting yeah. the down in the defense's mind. Is he going to throw it? Is he going to keep it? Second and four. Lowe's in the backfield. Ran off in motion, the big tight end. Lowe's got it. And low ran into Terrio Harrison, the 6'2", 240-pound junior from Texas, makes the stop a gain of one. It'll be third and three. You know, 640 remaining in this ball game, and Bob Davies said to us again this week, you know, last year we had nine games come down to our last drive. And he said, you know, we must finish games off this season like we did a year ago. If you are Purdue, 36 yard line, two down territory here, third and three. I think your defense is playing, so I would. Yeah, no, I would. Be a 53-yard field goal if they did not advance it. We'll see what happens. Under center. There's a pitch to Sutherland. He's got some room and in speed as well. 30-yard line, 25. He's tackled from behind as he got to the 22 by Anthony Weaver, gain of 14. Vinny Sutherland doesn't look like or run like a wide receiver in the sense. I mean, he looks like a fullback almost. He is so strong. He's 194 pounds. Here he is looking in. This time it wasn't the handoff. It was a little bit of a pitch. You know, well timed. He's not, he, he's certainly not patient either. He was going to outrun those offensive yeah. linemen, wasn't he? But he knew, you know, he knew he needed three yards and picked up about 12. But it trailed 14 nothing early. 17-14 at the half. It's now 20 to 14 inside six minutes. Brees the handoff. Low inside the 20. He's got some room before he's banged out by Tony Driver. Boy, Ian Allen, number 55. Did he? throw a nice block you know kind of a chop block this offensive line of Purdue kind of get in your in, 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 at your knees they chop a lot watch these guys yeah see that, that was the block right there and that was number 55 Ian Allen really good offensive line play second down and four from the 16 the twin tight ends either side Lockheed to the right Randolph to the left. Low on the handoff. Gain of a couple. They got third down and see where they spot it. Very close to the first down. Probably about a yard, yard and a half shy. And again, I think people look at 
at uh, these kinds of offenses, you wonder, hey, can you get it when you have to run the ball? Can you get it? Now, now you're in two down territory, though, I think, though, Craig, if you need those two downs. Well, Jim Chaney said even on third and short, well, if we run well, we'll do it. They have three or four plays on either the pass or the run on this third and short. They could pass it as well, but he's going to head off. Tripped up. He got did it. fall down and believed to get the first down. Weaver got a piece of him behind the line of scrimmage, but Lowe fell forward, and he needs all that. He's only 5'8". And, you know, I think this is, if you're Bob Davey and Greg Madison, defensive coordinator, you really worry about Drew Brees. First, his right arm. But, boy, he scores a lot of touchdowns with his legs. And if you're Joe Tiller or Drew Brees, you're saying, hey, I'd really like to use as much of this four minutes as I possibly can before I, you know, I score. You'll take the score anytime, obviously, but you'd love to milk that clock a few minutes before you score. Morales going wide left with Vinny Sutherland on first and ten from the 11. Brown is in. Brown with some move. The flag is down as he's down near the two-yard line in the backfield again. Yeah, that, that'll be a hold. The umpire threw the flag again. Jim Lapetita talking it over. And yes, holding against Purdue. Boy, we've, we've talked all game about these miscues for Purdue. And these things are going to happen in, during the course of a game. But there have been so many critical errors for Purdue. Because you look at the sheer numbers here, Pat. Holding offense. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. I mean, Still Purdue has foul. 376 yards. And Notre Dame has just 182 total. And yet, the Irish lead by six. I think it's right here, 55, maybe. That's Ian uh, Allen. No, that, that wasn't a hold there. That was somewhere else. That wasn't on Ian Allen. Trips to the left. Five wide, empty set on first and 21. Breeze in trouble, trying to get it out. Well, let's see if we get a flag that, there. That, that's got to be ground. I mean, they had him in the backfield. Yeah. Davies calling for the flag. Now, now Drew Brees, you know, did a really smart thing. He got up and started pointing to his tight end right away, but this tight end was quite a ways away from him. Smart play by Brees. Who's he throwing for? Well, he's pointing at Tim Stratton, but you're right. I don't think there's a receiver really in the neighborhood, as they say. I mean, he's, that, yeah, that, he's that's, clearly that's trying to that's avoid the sack. Should be grounded. Didn't get it. And their field goal does them no good. Mm. The clock becoming a factor. 3.45. He's looking at trip to the left. Floating run. Sutherland out there. Touchdown. Flag down. A flag is down again in the backfield. Breeze does not see it. He's got his hands up. He may have been roughed. He's, he's noticing the flag now, but let's yep. see if he was hit late again. Flag down late. He's walking pretty confidently. Yep, personal foul. Gonna be a touch. Two years ago in this stadium, Drew Brees, the fourth quarter, threw two interceptions, has cost his team the game. Here, his senior year, less than four minutes, when his team really needed it, he gets the ball up and gives Vinny Sutherland a chance. To, that, that's a strong catch by Sutherland. Excuse me, it's right here. Strong hands by Sutherland. Really strong hands. Because Brock Williams really tried to strip him. And, and they should be happy. Their Heisman Trophy candidate gives his team a chance to go up by one with this kick. 20 to 20. Dorch had a record 56 hit streak of his own. Not DiMaggio. He had 56 straight extra points between 98 and 99. Had a fantastic kicking career here. The extra point for the lead. Perfect. So Drew Brees has battled back, and the man has been Vinny Sutherland out of West Palm Beach, Florida, with a huge game. And now with 3.39 to go, the focus back to the Irish offense. R really a clutch play. But you know what? I think most of us expect that out of Drew Brees. You know, threw the ball. It was a lot. It was a lot ball. He just kind of. And then, then I think the real strong hands of Sutherland because Brock Williams was kind of pulling his arm away from him. Really good catch. 
Joe Tiller will take it and a one point lead with three and a half to go in the fourth. Notre Dame Stadium, Purdue has taken their first lead of the game. It's a familiar story for Notre Dame in terms of the closeness. Michigan last year, four point game, Purdue, five point game. BC, all losses here, two point game. At Stanford, three, then of course last week in overtime against number one Nebraska. And today, well, you can't blame the defense. Did a pretty good job against Drew Brees again. And he settled with two touchdowns for Purdue. However, Notre Dame is in the situation down by one. Three and a half to go. And look at that kick. Oh. Just when you need a big kick, kick off by your by your field, your kickoff guy, Travis Dorsch, you get one. But you know, th th this is what Bob Davey was saying. We've got to finish off games. They started last year after the last game a year ago. They said they want to be more aggressive on defense, which they certainly have been. And they want to finish games off. They trail by one. They have three timeouts remaining. You know, Gary Godsey does not look overwhelmed by this thing. He has thrown an interception. But, you know, you, you get the sense that he certainly has a strong enough arm to get the ball downfield. And with Getherall and Givens, you've got some guys pretty good after the catch. His last pass was picked off, so we'll see if he has the amnesia, which you really need. Forget the mistakes. They've got to go. Not quite 80 because the field goal will do it, but they do have to move it, and that's not going to work. Julius Jones just stuffed. He's had a rough day running. Absolutely for the most part. stuffed. Mitrione and Johnson on the stop. Yeah, that's that's the, the old turkey sandwich. They both had a slice of him. Man, Landon Johnson off the corner on the blitz and Mitrione. Well, when he when he doesn't guess, even when he, doesn't, he is pretty good, he gets a lot of penetration. Man. So now it's second and twelve. Not the stuffing at him too, and that turkey hit. Even Hunter down here, he's come up the last couple of weeks with some big catches for the Irish. Irish going with a four wide out. And a single setback to the right of the quarterback, Gotzi. Over the middle, inside the Getherall. Getting about a gain of seven or so. Aiken Adell made the stop. It'll bring up third and short. 2.40 remaining in the ball game. Down by one. Yeah, that, that's a pretty good pass. Okay, you, you know, that's a good, good throw. You try to give it to Getherall, let him run with it afterwards because he's so good after the catch. Take a lot of time here in the huddle. Big third down play, huge for Notre Dame. Could be the game, third and three. Run formation. Gotzi handing off, first down, Julius Jones! Oh, if Getherall gets a block there, I think he scores. Oh, how do you like that? Well, you know, it was funny, it didn't surprise me. Running formation, Purdue had eight guys up close to the line of scrimmage. J Jordan Black, Jim Jones on the left side do a good job. Jones, number 55, Black going to knock on his guy inside. Really good block by Jordan Black. Uh, Black. Yeah, there was uh, Chris Clopton, number 23. It was kind of scurrying around there, forced a couple of cuts by Julius Jones, which saved a TD. But a rushing game, Pat, that has got less than three yards a game. On third and three, they come through the big play. Over the middle, incomplete for Gibbons. Gardner on the coverage. You know, they have not been able to rely on their run game, and finally, we got a good block. Looked like Jones was going to go inside, and he just pushed it outside for the first down. But now it's second and ten. Gary Gotzi, when Davies went to his house, he said, "I got to make it clear. I've already committed to a quarterback. You're coming here as a tight end if you want to." He was dying to come to Notre Dame his whole life. He even came as a tight end with the thought that he could impress enough to become the starting quarterback for the Blue and Gold. Lofting one, nearly picked off. Schweigert had a chance at it. Second time for Schweiger. Terrence Howard, intended receiver, third and ten. I'll tell you one thing Notre Dame has found out is that Gary Gotzi was hanging the pocket. He will hang in the pocket. One more time, here's number nine, Schweiger. Really did a good job of reading. Well, Gotzi just got hammered. Absolutely hammered. Good, you know, range oh. there by uh, Stuart Swigert. And it was Mitrione in the big hit. 146 remaining in the ball game. With this two down territory. Third and ten. Gotzi passing over the middle. Complete. First down. He's got Javen Hunter across the 50. So on two big third down. Play. Okay, Shane, again, we were talking about the pressure on Gary Godsey. 
And that play, that was a key fourth quarter, third and 10 completion. Notre Dame is trailing at this point by a point. So this is as critical as it gets. And Godsey was pretty good on this game winning drive. He was four of six passing for 37 of the 59 yards on the drive. And right here he steps up and completes another big pass. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm looking at this offense. I'm like, God, this, this offense is incredible. You have Julius Jones and Tony Fisher in the background, in the backfield at the same time. You got D. Gibb and Javen and little Joey Gatherall. Um, and then you look at the line. I think three of the five guys went to the NFL. That, that offense is, is incredible. I, I remember going up against them in, in, off, in, in practice. Um, they, couldn't, they couldn't beat us. But I just remember how good they were. Um, in practice and just, I mean, Gatsy had a lot of talent around him. He just had to not lose the game. You know, there's two kinds of confidence. You want every player to have confidence. And you can see Gatsy also really tough because he took some shots in this game. But the best way to build confidence is through success. Now, this is a Notre Dame team that the previous week lost to Nebraska on your home field in overtime. So as a defense on the sideline right now, with Purdue up by one, is there complete confidence that Notre Dame's going to go down and win the game? Yeah, you know, again, like I said, I had complete confidence in, in our guys. I, I, I played against the receivers at, every day in practice, and then I played against guys on Saturday. They, they made my job easier on Saturday um, because I felt like I was going up against the best receivers in the nation every week. Um, and then to have to play on Saturday, I said, this is, this is easy for me. So – all the confidence in the world in our offense, as you can see, um, they got they got a ton of guys out there that, that can ball. So um, all the confidence in the world that these guys were going to put it in or, or get the go-ahead score. And nobody was really being too cautious because the shovel pass, that one to Tony Driver, that takes some guts in that situation. Yeah, you know, it's it, it does. It's also a safe play too, right? Because if he drops it, it's, it's, it's actually a forward pass. So it's it could be considered incomplete pass, but it, it's a great play. Like they did a they did a good job of doing stuff, and they again they trusted Gary to uh, to make plays, and, and he did when he counted. And the pair of Tonys that was Tony Fisher, Tony Driver uh, played with you in the secondary. Yeah. We will be back in just a few moments, folks. You know that it comes down to a field goal, and we'll get you there in just a second. We've done it three times this game. Remember, it's third in about three. Well, the, the Irish always like their tight ends in these situations when they're throwing it. High formation. On third and three, it's Jones. Up the middle, first down, Notre Dame. Down to the 22. Plopped it on the stop, and again on the third, third down of this drive. That was huge. There was a third and three earlier. There was the third and ten, and now this one, Notre Dame comes through with the big play. And, you know, and the offensive line really responded. They responded at the beginning of this half in a third and three when you really need to create a hole. They did there for Julius Jones. Jim Jones, 55, just kind of picks it off his guy. Fain, the center, did a nice job. 43 seconds remaining. Don't have to worry about thinking about a 47-yard field goal. Was there a problem on the snap? No, no, they're just trying to keep the ball in the middle of the field. Straight. It's still yeah. far, though, Pat. Well, it's what, 37-yarder? It's probably going to be a 37-yard field goal from right here, certainly within his range. As Bob reported, a little bit of a wind. Purdue thinking about even if he does hit the field goal to have a little time, so they chalk up the timeout on the Boilermaker side, and they have one left as well. Now, you look at a guy like Seta, sophomore, hit a key field goal last week in overtime against Nebraska to give Notre Dame the early lead, but in his career, he's only had five kicks. But you know, I, I sense that Nick Seta is, is, is not just a kicker. I sense he's kind of an athlete. We talked about what a great track player and high jumper, a track runner and a track uh, high jumper he is. And, uh, you know, he's, he's been pretty clutch most of this year. This will be, you know, a, a duress situation for the kicker. Again, and if Notre Dame with still one timeout remaining, they'll run another play, and I suspect Purdue will use their last timeout very quickly. One for two today, four for five in his career. Hit a 59-yarder in high school, an Illinois State record for Lockport Township, but that was against Bloom High School in 1996. Little different Not stage. the Purdue yeah. Boilermakers in front of 80,000. However, here will be 
Depending on what the Irons do, he's already got about a 39-yarder. It's not exactly a chip no, shot, though, for, a, for a young chip, kicker. No. A little surprise the Irish call the last play. And I think they do want to keep the ball in the, in the center of the field. Though. Win factor, as Bob mentioned, as well. High formation. Lipinski and Jones behind Gotzi. Jones gets it. Not much. Yeah, Purdue will call time, will they? Maybe a yard. Gardner on the stop. Clock moving. Yeah, they're not going to use their last time out. Notre Dame. Notre Dame will let it run down. Notre Dame 17, has a timeout. Yeah, yeah they'll, they'll let it run down. Usually inside five. Where's the, where's the play clock? The play clock had not started, so he can let it get down to five seconds. In case you get a bad snap, you want to give yourself five seconds. At, well, the clock, well, they're going to go down to two. Oh, boy. Mm. You know, on third down, you on third down, because it is third down, you'd like to give yourself five or six seconds in case you have a bad snap, you have another chance. Right. Right? Even from here, it would be a 45-yarder. If they mess the snap up, yep. they still have a chance to hit that one. You know, it's... Uh, Wow, but this is it. You know, this is the, you know the game decider. Nick Seta is 19 years old. Today he hit the 47-yarder, hit the 32, but missed from 39. And this one's going to be right around that 38-yard field goal attempt. Just a sophomore. Strange number for a kicker to be wearing too. Number 13. <laughs> Well, you know, they, they say he's free-spirited and nothing flushes him, and I guess that's the best sign. Yeah. Then you have all, three parts to this attempt, really, is the snap, and that's from a, a walk-on, John Crowther, who's done it all year, the hold, another walk-on, Adam Tibble, and then the scholarship kicker. Purdue has one more timeout. Has he been frozen enough for... Will they extinguish that one here? Looks like they're going to let him kick it right here. 19-year-old Nick Senna from Lockport, Illinois. Now the game. Yeah, there they, there yeah, they did. Yep. So he's going to, in fact, they waited for him right to the point of nearly the snap to think about it just a little more. Our thanks to the folks at Goodyear for today's overhead shots. It was 1925 when Goodyear first began coverage at major sporting events. It was 1896 when this series started. Purdue won that game 28 to 22. They've met for 55 straight years. Irish have won 12 of the last 14, but Purdue in the Tilla era has won two of the last three. Well, you know, I, I don't know if Nick Seta is nervous. But I bet you his parents are. Ooh. Had the great performance in the preseason scrimmage to steal the job from David Miller last week. He hit that 29-yarder uh, against Nebraska in overtime for the early lead. This one is from 38 for the win. Walk-on snapper, walk-on holder. He's done a good job this year, particularly uh, Tibble, the, the holder, has handled some high snaps already this year. John Crowther will snap it. Set up from 38. On the way. It's good. And Notre Dame has won. All right, Shane, is there any better feeling than winning a game on the last play? Uh, it's, it's incredible, especially um, – with what happened the week before, losing on the on the last play in overtime, um, and so I just think it really shows the the team's resolve and the belief that you know we're we're one of the best teams in the nation um, to come off a heartbreaking loss in overtime to the number one team in the country, and then come back without our quarterback um, and have a, a a first first time starter in there and, and come and win a game against a, a solid team, um, and if phenomenal quarterback on the other side of the ball is just shows the resolve that, that, that this team had. And this is just Nick Setta's third career game as the place kicker. He had sent the previous week's game into overtime with a field goal. He made three of four in this game. 
I know Reggie Brooks and I have had a vaudeville routine going on now for close to two decades. Where Reggie always tells me, you know, kickers aren't real football players. They're a necessary evil. Uh, but not only was Seta an outstanding athlete, uh, I think the fact that he chose to wear number 13, which is supposedly the unluckiest number in existence, just kind of goes to his sense of self-confidence. That 100%. Nick, that's what I was going to say. Nick is uh, a guy that has supreme confidence. And uh, some look at it as, like, cocky. But, you know, he had the ultimate belief in himself. And he had the belief in himself because he put in the work. Um, if you don't put in the work and, and just believe you're the best, then I believe that's cocky. But – you know, when you believe you're the best and you put in the work to be the best, that's confidence. And so that's what Nick had. And it, I don't think it was a question in anyone's mind if he was going to make that or not. It was just that's who he is. And he, he likes that. He likes that moment. And he came in and, and provided for us. Now, you guys are going to win seven of your next eight games and earn a Fiesta Bowl bid. So as you look back on it now, and this was your first season playing football, how important was this Purdue game to – uh, end up having what legitimately was a successful season. I know any year when you don't win the title and you don't win your bowl game, it's not what you want. But 9-3 and three against the schedule you were playing at the time certainly isn't bad, and it could have gone the other way had you not won this game. So as players, how important did you think this was? You know, it, again, it just it forms it formulates a belief in your mind that, like, no matter what happens, we have an opportunity to win this game, and that was the mindset um, throughout the year and, and every time I strapped the helmet on. I just I, I would have loved to see um, what this team could have done with uh, Arnez at the quarterback spot. Uh, one of the best athletes I've ever been around in my life. Um, and you watch that Nebraska game. He was one of the best athletes in the country. Um, and to have him back there and throwing the ball with the, the talent around him, it, it would have just been incredible. Um, so it, bummer um, for him, but, you know, his, his path went well and had a great career in the NFL as, as a receiver. But, you know, this is, again, it's Notre Dame, and it's, it's what we do. We, we adapt, we adjust, and we don't flinch, and we just, we just go play and, and win football games. And not just throwing the ball, but obviously running the ball. It's one of the reasons you had so much option in there. So you had to retool everything offensively heading into this particular game. And for you, just your third game to have the kind of success that you did. You had an interception your first the previous week. Uh, another one in this game against Drew Brees. You knew you could play at this level, but how much of a lift did you get against possibly the best quarterback in the country with the success that you had individually and the success that your unit had? You know, you, you said it earlier. It's, um, you can go out there and, and believe all you want. And if you're not having success, it, it's tough to, to keep believing that you can do it. Um, and so I think myself and, and for the defense and for this team in particular, we kept having small successes and we would build on that um, and ultimate, for the ultimate goal to have, have the big success. So um, just those little small successes and just continuing on and just believing that you had opportunity no matter what the, the odds. And I know there's another special guest analyst you want to bring in uh, before we wrap this thing up tonight. We saw someone in the uh, – downstairs uh, in your wonderful viewing room there who had a helmet on earlier. Is that analyst still there? Oh, you want me to get him? Yeah. Isaiah, come here, dude, bring the helmet. <laughs> Isaiah made an appearance earlier, folks, uh, during our taping of this. And Isaiah is your five-year-old? He's my five-year-old. I have a five-year-old and a two-year-old. Isaiah is, is the five-year-old who I think will be uh, strapping the helmet on in college someday. Um, if it, if it were up to him, he'd be playing at Notre Dame. He, anytime I, if I watch NFL or something, he'd say, he'd say, Dad, this is not Notre Dame. So he doesn't believe I can watch anything other than Notre Dame. <laughs> now, what's his favorite number? 42. He loves it. <laughs> All right, well, he made a great appearance uh, He's earlier. Funny. And, well, I, we let him get out of He was already suited up before. So that clearly <laughs> is our fault. Um, but it's, it's great. You're wearing your Notre Dame. Jersey, what the players that you coach now, how much does it mean to them that you played at Notre Dame? You know, I, I think at first they, they just think it, it's Notre Dame and it's okay, I'm, I'm old. And then 
they think they could beat me and I line up I, every year as a freshman or a sophomore that thinks they could beat me. I line up with them and just don't let them off the line. And, and then they, then they realize. here's that. Here he is. I said, say hello. Hi. Who's your favorite team? Nothing. Your favorite number? 42. And who's your favorite player? Mm. Better say Dada. <laughs> Dada. That's good. That's good. Is that a game helmet? Is that one of your game helmets? Yes, that's my game helmet. He loves to put it on, and he always wants to play, and he wants me to tackle him and throw the ball with him, and so he, he loves it. Now, you are you also still the athletic director at your school? And which school are you at again? At, at my high school that I went to, Bishops. Um, so I'm, I'm the assistant AD, and also I do work in the dean's office. And from what I've read about that, there's a similar culture there than the one that you experienced at Notre Dame. Tradition, yeah, you know, togetherness. It, no, same thing. Uh, academics. Um, you know, I went to Notre Dame, and Notre Dame was was kind of easy for me after going to the school I went to. Um, and so, you know, I know every year, every year at, at the high school I work at, there's about seven or eight kids who get a perfect score on the SAT, and there's probably ten others who miss one. So, um, it's a high academic institution, and it's it's similar to Notre Dame in, in that in that regard. All right, Shane, we can't thank you enough for giving us. Uh, this time today. I uh, hope you guys are quarantining uh, safely in yeah. place uh, and that we all come through this together. But I know the fans are really enjoying spending Saturday nights and getting the insight from the guys who actually played. I've watched a lot, but I haven't been on that field for a Notre Dame game and uh, contributed. So it's great that you showed your insight and it's great to see the impact that you continue to have. What I always tell folks is to me, the thing that makes Notre Dame athletics so special is that virtually every athlete, male and female, that I get to know goes on to make the communities mm -hmm. where they live better places. A lot of them do it through volunteering. Uh, you've even taken that next step, dedicating your life to coaching and, and teaching and helping students. And we commend you for that. Yeah, thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. And it was a blessing to be here. And I just appreciate it again. And Isaiah, thanks for coming on. Tom, you're welcome. You're welcome. All right, you do what your dad tells you, and your mom, too. Yeah, I'm sure he already does. All right, guys. Thank you. Folks, that's going to do it for tonight's Game Watch. We hope you'll join us again next week when we revisit the 2004 Notre Dame victory over Michigan. Until then, for Shane Walton, I'm Jack Nolan. Thanks so much for watching, and for Isaiah, too. And as always, go Irish. <laughs>